Good morning and welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. You're getting a live look now at the Quest Airlock's equipment lock inside the International Space Station, where preparations are underway to begin a six and a half hour single task spacewalk. Our spacewalkers today are NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron. They're just now on the other side of the hatch in what's known as the crew lock. When they come into view, Tom Marshburn will be wearing the suit with the red stripes, and Kayla Barron will be wearing a white striped or unmarked space suit. They are not visible on screen now. The two launched to the space station as part of the Crew 3 mission earlier this month. Uh, right now on your screen, you can see Mark Bandahai and Raja Chari. Chari. They'll be flying in and out of view as they help Marshburn and Barron along to get their EVA underway. Mark Vandehai on your screen now in the pants, while Rajachari is wearing the green shorts. Baron and Marshburn have completed the suit-up process in preparation to exit the space station's quest airlock. We copy, Raja. The task they'll be completing today is to replace a faulty communications antenna system. The system we're going to be talking about today is called the S-Band Antenna Subassembly, or SASA. Airlock Houston on one. In one minute, you'll be hot mic'd on Space to Ground One. The SASA went down sometime in mid-September, but fortunately a spare is already on board the exterior of the space station, and the station has a number of other methods of communication. Step 76. Wilco. Rajatari just talking about how we're about six minutes away from depressurization. Again, astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn are kind of on the other side of the door there in the crew lock, getting ready for depressurization. We're good with that. Our spacewalkers today are running ahead of schedule. We expect to get out the door a little early. All right, so how do Baron and Marshburn go about replacing the SASA? What will they be doing today? First, they'll get to the robotic arm and get it set up and configured, and set up the work site at the Express Logistics Carrier 3 where the spare SASA lives. They'll then remove the failed SASA on the station's port one truss and stow it temporarily. They'll retrieve the spare and install it. They'll then stow the failed SASA where the spare once was on the Express Logistics Carrier. Serial number 0020 and 0022. Copy, good numbers, Raja. And crew is hot mic Finally, they'll conclude their EVA by cleaning up their work site. And since the spacewalkers are getting an early start this morning, they may have time to do some get-ahead tasks. Have fun out there. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Chris. Go with it. Thank you. You just heard the voice of NASA astronaut Jessica Muir wishing the team a good luck this morning.
Airlock for Raja, you have a go for step 77, 78 through 79. Good words. All right, Taylor, you can check that the deep pump power switch is off. The deep pump power switch is off. For the deep rest pump enable LEDs on. Deep rest pump enable LEDs on. Airlock, wait for your go on step 80. The flight director is now polling whether they want to go for depressurization. We're in a brief but expected handover period between satellites. Uh, flight Director Vincent Lacourt is in mission control today, and he's in the process of polling his flight directors to see if we are go for depressurization. One just waiting on your go for step 80. 30 seconds, Roger. Flight Director Vincent LaCourt is visible in your view. Sitting by him is astronaut Drew Morgan, who will serve as the ground IV today. Hello, last year. We've got another one coming up in about five minutes where we should have solid coverage. Roger. Copy. You may hear the voice of NASA astronaut Johnny Kim, who will be speaking. He's going to be the Cap Tom today. Airlock Houston, Roger. You have to go for depress, step 80. You go for the crew lock depress guard, step 80. And we just got official confirmation that we are go for depressurization. This is expected to debate take about 30 minutes. Depress for Kayla on the UIA switch the depress pump power to on. Depress pump power is on. Okay, we're going to wait for 10 seconds. Switch the deep press pump isolation valve to open. Expect an alert tone. Deep press pump man ISO valve is open. Okay, for both of you, Tom and Kayla, check your DCMs to monitor the suit pressure gauge is less than 5.5. If it ever gets to greater than 5.5, we're going to stop the deep press and talk to Houston. One copy. Two copies. When the crew lock is at 6. Expect an alert tone. Copy. Roger.
Depressurization is now officially underway. During the depressurization, the pressure will be taken down to 5 PSI. Then they'll pause and do a system check with Mission Control Houston and a suit check to make sure there are no leaks. If all goes well as expected, depressurization will continue down to vacuum. They'll do one more check and receive a go to turn their suits to internal battery power, which is the official start time of the spacewalk. The PSI of the crew lock is now about 12, 12, 12.2 and steadily going down. We introduced you earlier to Flight Director Vincent LaCour, our Capcom Johnny Kim, and our Ground IV Drew Morgan. Another key player in today's operation is Art Thomason, the EVA officer overseeing this mission. EVA stands for Extravehicular Activity, which is a fancy way of saying spacewalk. The two may be used interchangeably during the coverage this morning. Uh, Thomason gives a more detailed animated view of the steps Barron and Marshburn will take to complete today's operations. Let's take a look. For U.S. EVA-78, both crew members will be working together to replace a failed S-band antenna. EV-1 will be Tom Marshburn, wearing the suit with the red stripes. EV-2 will be Kayla Barron, wearing the suit with the white stripes. EV-1 will lead out by going up to Cedar Spur and translating on to Face-1. There he will begin setting up the robotic arm. EV-2 will follow the same path initially, translate up to face one, and then continue zenith past the failed S-band antenna and out to express logistics carrier number three. Once at the work site, EV-2 will stow two bags and then retrieve a rigidizable tether. This tether will be installed on the forward face of the logistics carrier and will be used to temporarily stow the degraded antenna as it's brought over to the carrier later in the EVA. EV-1 will set up the robotic arm by installing a portable foot restraint. And then we'll ingress that foot restraint and get ready for arm motion. EV-2 will continue some prep work at the express logistics carrier and then we'll translate to the degraded SASA or S-band antenna. EV-1 will then provide guidance to the robotic arm to get him to his next work site, while EV-2 will release three connectors that provide heater power, functional power, and data. EV-1 will put gimbal locks in place. These will prevent the antenna from moving as it's translated back and forth from P1 over to the express logistics carrier. These four bolts will then be driven by the pistol grip tool. EV-1 will then have the robotic arm rotate him around to the handrail side of the S-band antenna while EV-2 releases the stanchion bolt that secures the antenna to structure. Once that bolt is released, the crew will work together to free the antenna, and EV-1 will translate on the robotic arm to express logistics carrier number three. Both crew members will work together to temporarily stow this S-band antenna in that rigidizable tether. They'll then begin to prepare the spare so that it can be brought over to P1. They'll remove a thermal blanket, stow that out of the way. This provides thermal conditioning for the unit. They each have two bolts each to release and they'll be using a special tool called a right angle drive in order to gain access to those bolts. EV2 will then get into position to drive the two remaining bolts. 
pistol grip tool will be used for that as well. These are called the mast bolts. There's a soft dock to overcome. Uh, once that is overcome, EV1 will gain control of the spare unit and then we'll ride the arm over to the P1 worksite. Once at the P1 worksite, both crew members will work together to soft dock this or it will be temporarily held into the truss while ED2 drives the stanchion bolt that will secure it in place. ED2 will then reconnect the three connectors that provide heater power, functional power, and data. ED1 will release the four gimbal locks. At this point, the antenna will be free to track satellites to allow good communication between the space station and the ground. Once the crew is clear of the worksite, they'll perform a checkout on this antenna. Both crew members will then head back to Express Logistics Carrier Number 3. At this point, they'll be working together to stow the degraded unit back onto the Flight Releasable Attach Mechanism, or FRAM. This is the way that these or use or orbital replacement units are brought onto the space station. This one has heater power that helps to keep it alive. EV2 will drive two bolts to secure it to structure. These are called the mast bolts. Once those bolts are driven, the final step will be to install a thermal blanket that provides thermal conditioning and keeps this degraded unit available as a spare if it's ever needed. EV-1 will then back away from the work site on the robotic arm and head back towards the truss. EV-2 will then gather the bags and tools at the work site and stow those on her body restraint tether. She'll head back to the airlock where she can stow those bags. Meanwhile, EV-1 will be getting off of the robotic arm. He'll remove the portable foot restraint and he'll return it to the starboard seat of cart. This is where he picked it up at the beginning of the EVA. head back to the airlock as well. They're both ingress. And this will conclude US EBA 78. That was EVA Officer Art Thomason providing a voiceover for the animation describing today's tasks. We're back live in the equipment lock of the crew airlock. Uh, Rajachari in the green shorts on the left of your screen and Mark Vandehei on the right. Marshburn and Barron are on the other side of the hatch in the crew lock as depressurization is underway. Pressure is nearing 5 psi, at which point they'll pause and do some systems checks. This will be the 245th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It will be the fifth spacewalk for astronaut Tom Marshburn. He completed 24 hours and 29 minutes of spacewalking time in his previous four EBAs. It'll be Kayla Barron's first spacewalk in her career. This is the first spacewalk of Expedition 66, which began back in mid-October, and today's operation will ring in the 13th spacewalk of 2021. Okay, Kayla, we're seeing 5 PSI here, so you can take the deep press pump manual isolation valve to close and expect an alert tone. The deep press pump manual isolation valve is closed. Got the close, thanks. For both of you, switch your display to status until you see leak check 
Question mark this way. Go on, copy. NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei is now walking our spacewalkers through some system checks. One of the thing. Good. Switch display to yes. Hold for two seconds and follow the displayed instructions. And work for one. EV2 has the check complete, set up to actuator to EVA. One of the same. Okay, I think, did you both please tell me that your O2 actuators are in EVA after the leak check complete? Same work. That's the firm and we're going to EVA. EV2, O2 actuator is in EVA. Copy, O2 actuator for EV2 is an EVA. Tom, I, I, you may have already said this, but I didn't catch it. Not yet. Be in work for EV1. And I'm getting a message for an O2 actuator fault. Yeah, that typically happens when you put it, when it's not completely in position, so try to get it all the way into yeah. the correct position EVA, and it should say O2 actuator EVA. Sticking a little bit. I can press. SpaceLock was originally scheduled for Tuesday, November 30th. However, the evening before, NASA received, received a debris notification. Both of you can expect an alert tone. Depress top manual isolation valve is open. Okay, stand by. Okay, the emergency MPEV over here is open. For both of you, monitor the suit pressure gauge stays less than 5.5. Five. Copy. Copy. The crew lock is at 2 PSI. We're going to change the depressed pump manual isolation valve back to close. Two copies at 2 PSI. We'll take the depressed pump manual isolation valve to close. That was astronaut Mark Vandehei communicating that the checks were good. After the planned hold at 5 PSI, we've continued to bring the crew lock down to vacuum. It's now at about 4 PSI. NASA originally had planned on the spacewalk for Tuesday, November 30th, but the evening before, NASA received a debris notification for the International Space Station. 
due to the lack of opportunity to properly assess the risk it could pose to the astronauts. Teams decided to delay the spacewalk until more information was available. However, NASA determined that the orbit of the debris did not pose a risk to the scheduled spacewalk by Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron or to the International Space Station operations. Delaying the spacewalk provided an opportunity for NASA to evaluate the risk from the debris notification. The space station schedule and operations were able to easily accommodate the, the delay of the spacewalk. Even though the SASA became faulty, the crews had no trouble communicating with Mission Control in Houston. The International Space Station has several built-in redundancies, so in the event that something happens, they always have a way of communicating with the crew. Even though this antenna becoming faulty hasn't had a big impact on the astronauts, mission managers decided to go ahead and plan the spacewalk to ensure communications and redundancy. Okay, Kayla, we're seeing the crew locks at 2 PSI. Go ahead and change the depressed pump manual isolation valve. And report your initial tether configuration for egress. Roger. In work. Tom, um, would you like me to start or would you like to go first? I'll start. I just need my voice tether. Roger. Goodness. And for EV1, on the right, my right beam reading extender. On my weight feather, small hook is closed and locked. Our truck on my weight feather is closed and locked. On Kayla's anchor hook for the retake feather pack, and her hook is closed and locked as well. Now going to my left. And now on my left, my left D-ring extender is on my red hook, which is closed and locked. Going to the red reel. My yellow hook is closed and locked on the green reel. The green hook is closed and not locked on the red reel. I have my anchor hook from the green reel on the uh, elevating workstation. Not locked. Roger, and for EV2, I have a single wave feather. It is connected with the small hook to my right D-ring extender. 
That's gate closed, side or locked. My waist tether large hook is attached to the airlock steering extender. That's gate closed, slider locked. My red hook is attached to my right D-ring extender. Gate closed, slider locked. My red reel is unlocked. My yellow hook is attached to my green reel. Gate closed, slider locked. My green reel is unlocked. My green hook is attached to my red reel, and my green hook is unlocked. And my anchor hook, as Tom reported, is attached to his waist tether large hook. Both gates closed, both hooks locked. Okay, that sounds like a good config. Let me check with Houston, see if they have any questions. Houston, stage, Houston airlock on one. Any questions about the tether config? Hey, good morning, Mark. We heard a good configuration. All right, sounds great, thanks. And uh, for Hilla and Tom, when the crew lock EPDT is about zero, you can expect an alert tone. And let me know when the EV hatch delta pressure shows less than 0.5 PSI. Copy, we're showing 1.2 right now. And same on the gauge. Mark Vandehei, a suit IV for this operation, just confirming with our spacewalkers that they have good tether configuration as the crew lock goes down to vacuum. We're at about 1.2 PSI for now. Earlier this morning, Barron and Marshburn completed a pre-breathe exercise. They breathed 100% oxygen, not yet in their spacesuits, just through a mask to purge the nitrogen from their bodies. The next portion of that exercise is to involve, the next portion is to do some in-suit light exercise or aisle, this time in their spacesuits. This was all completed before we went on air today. These are movements that they did as another way of increasing their metabolic rate and purging excess nitrogen from their blood. It helps them acclimate the body to the lower pressure of the suit. Doing so causes the spacewalking astronauts to avoid getting the bends or decompression sickness. This is something that scuba divers on Earth may be familiar with. We're talking now about the PSI, or the pounds per square inch in the crew lock. It's currently at about 1.1. We experience here on the ground 14.7 at normal operating pressure. The spacesuits are pressurized to about 4.3 PSI. That's about what you would experience if you were standing at an elevation of roughly 30,000 feet here on Earth. You're getting a live view of NASA astronauts Rajachari and Mark Vandehei, Chari on the left, 
Vanda High on the right. They're known as the Suit IVs and are assisting Marshburn and Barron in the, they assisted them in the suit up process. In addition to the suit IVs up in space, we also have a team of people here in Mission Control who will support Marshburn and Barron today. Vincent LaCourt is the lead flight director for today's SASA spacewalk, and NASA astronaut Drew Morgan is serving as the ground IV. The ground IV is the one who communicates with Marshburn and Barron during the spacewalk, while the Capcom is the person who communicates with the crew staying inside. You'll likely hear Morgan's voice quite often as the spacewalkers move through the procedures of the day. It is showing just under point eight. Okay. Copy. Of course, we can't forget about European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. He is not visible now, but he will be operating the robotic arm during today's spacewalk. NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn will take the robotic arm to and from the Express Logistics Carrier Number 3. Depressurization is still underway. The crew lock sitting at about 0 0.7 PSI. 0.7. Rajatari on the left of your screen was selected to be an astronaut at the same time as first-time spacewalker Kayla Barron. They were both selected to the astronaut corps in 2017 and are a part of the Turtles astronaut class. They are both the first of their class to fly to space. Gage is showing point six. Happy point six.
NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei on the right has quite a bit of spacewalking experience himself, even though he's not spacewalking today. He's conducted four spacewalks previously, totaling 26 hours and 42 minutes, a record that Tom Marshburn will no doubt top today. We will be taking your questions throughout the six and a half hour operation today. So if you have any questions about the spacewalk, spacesuits, or the replacement of the antenna system today, head on over to Twitter and submit yours using hashtag AskNASA. Hey Tom, we are showing less than 0.5 PSI. You're go to open the hatch, but after you unlatch the hatch, make sure you pause a second before opening and storing the EV hatch. Copy, go to open the hatch and uh, pausing for a second before actually opening it. Hey, copy. Opening the hatch. Latch, the unlatched, pausing, and opening the hatch. Let me know if you'd like me to adjust my body position, Tom. Okay. Uh, working between the handle and the that's just coming. Tom, let me know when you've got that hatch stowed. And the hatch is stowed in the hatch keeper. Okay, the emergency MPEV is closed. Tom and Kayla, go crush it out there today. We're really looking forward to seeing you safely back inside and celebrating your successes. Um, take care of yourselves. And with that, Drew, over to you. Have a good day with them. Okay, Mark, good day, Drew. Hey, thanks, Mark, Raja, for getting us to this point. Tom, Kayla, good morning. We are all very excited to be with you. We are in the post-depress portion of the cue card now, and with that, on your DCMs, if you would switch power to battery, stagger your switch throws, and you can expect a warning tone with that. Good work. Standing by. Bat. Tom, confirm you're in bat. What is in bat? Found here. In bat. Okay, and I understand you guys are both in battery. If you'd check that your display switches are functional. Good work. Two switch 
Switch is functional. Switch is functional for one. Okay, Kayla, for you on the UIA, if you'd switch power for EV1 and EV2 to off, OFF, both, and then verify that all four LEDs are out. Roger, and work. Power for EV1 and 2 is off. All four LEDs are off. Okay, copy. And then on your DCM, you can disconnect your SCU from your DCM. Disconnecting. Work for two. My DCM, or my SCU is disconnected from the DCM and working on getting it in the pouch. Okay. One, and the DCM cover is back in place. Okay, copy, you guys are working the covers and the DCM covers as well as the SUs into the pouch. And I have a UP high message. That's expected, Drew. Yep, Kayla, we're tracking, Two, and uh, that's expected. Three. Yeah, Kayla, that's an expected message. We'll just, you're going to breathe it down a little bit. Yep. And uh, my SCU is stowed in the pouch. My DCM cover is in place. And for UV1, my SCU is in the pouch. And just getting it out of my way. Okay, it sounds like you're both in a good configuration there. That's complete for, yeah, good, that's complete for one. Okay, copy. And then, Kayla, if you could take the depressed pump manual iso, uh, isolation valve to closed. Uh, the depressed pump man iso valve is closed. Okay, all right, then if you guys would both check your TCVs, and we're going to take those to max hot, and that's toward your head. Good work. At 5.15 a.m. Central, the 13th spacewalk of the year, and the first spacewalk of Expedition 66 has officially begun. Copy. Let's switch your waters to the on position. That's toward your body. Water is on for one. 2 water is on. The spacewalkers are ahead of schedule. They are originally scheduled to begin on the 6 o'clock hour. They are about an hour ahead. One blank light off. 3 v 2 DCM is blank light off. Okay, copy. You guys can set your TCVs as desired if you just give us an estimate of where you're setting. One setting of seven. And for two, I'm also going to start out at six. Okay, copy of both. It's, if you would check your suit P gauge and let us know what you see. Suit P gauge for one is 4.2. For two, it is 4.4 .4 and slowly decreasing. Okay, copy guys, those are good numbers, and we are probably going to be coming out uh, right around, the sun will be coming up shortly, um, so visors as required, as you see out there, we will be coming out over South America. Copy. And it is dark outside right now, Kayla. Roger. Okay, Tom, yeah, you are go to open the hatch thermal cover, and you can just release that hook from the D-ring and then attach it to that stowage tether point that you see there. And if you just make sure that you cinch the straps, so you see about six lines. Yeah, that did work.
5.15 a.m. Central Time, 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time is the official start time of this spacewalk, marking the beginning of the 245th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance. Barron and Marshburn are expected to spend about six and a half hours replacing a faulty communications antenna system called the SASA on the Port 1 truss structure. Ground Eye View Drew Morgan told the spacewalkers to expect an orbital daytime. And I can see six lines in this code. Copy. I'll push and open the thermal hatch, the thermal cover. Yep, go ahead. Open. Okay, Tom, you're go to egress, and then if you'd attach your anchor hook to the forward external D-ring, and we'll stand by for your checks. UV-1, I've got my anchor hook closed and locked on the forward external airlock D-ring. Copy that, Tom, and you're going to connect Kayla's now to the aft external D-ring, and we'll stand by for those checks. Copy. You may hear our ground IV, Drew Morgan, refer to the astronauts as EV-1 and EV-2. Tom Marshburn is designated EV-1, while Kayla Barron is EV-2. Tom is wearing the suit with the red stripes, while Baron is wearing the unmarked suit. Kayla, I understand that you are safe inside for right now. Yep. I uh, waist tether in where it was. Copy. The airlock or the airlock steering extender. Okay, Kayla, your anchor hook, EV2, closed and locked on the aft external airlock steering. Roger. I'm working on getting out of your way. I am getting in position to transfer you crew lock bag number one on your go. Copy. And Tom, we hear you guys both in good tether configuration. You can give Kayla a go to release your waist tether at any point. And I understand you guys are working the bag, so we'll stand back from that. I know you guys have a plan, and uh, we'll stand by. Hey, Kayla, you are go to release that when you can, when you want to. Uh, there's the bag. Okay, I'm getting my BRP ready. If you take a close look at the top of your screen, you can see Tom Marshburn, NASA astronaut wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes, being the first one out the door. Remove the airlock rat. Okay, copy that. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron is inside the crew lock still, working to get Tom Marshburn some equipment that they'll need throughout the day before she goes out the door. Got it. Stand by for the ready. And actually, if you have a good eye on it, once you have your tether, you can release it and I'll send it back. Copy. My RET is on. Roger. Looking to release yours. Coming back. Okay. It is off. It's coming back to you. Roger. I've got it, and I will put it on the airlock during extender. All right. Go ahead and prep your visor. The sun is coming up. I see it. Happens fast. Visor is down. And Tom, if it's okay with you, I'm going to stick my feet out the hatch while I work my bag. Yeah, the hatch is clear. Fine with me. The 
We need that laser down. Mine is down. And Tom, while you're out there, you can also turn your HECA on. Work. All right, I've got my BRT RET on the medium ORU bag. And my intention is to tend it out after me. If you um, are clear, Tom, I'll start heading out. Yeah, I'm clear. Marshburn got the cue to turn on his HECA. Copy, Tom and Kayla. We see you're heading out. Sun's coming up. And you'll be right over South America here in a couple minutes. Roger. And on my way by, I'm going to pick up my waist feather, the airlock earring extender, and I'm coming out, Tom. Are you okay? I see you. That's me a little bit. Take a close look at the top of your screen there. You can see NASA astronaut Kayla Barron making her way out to her spacewalk, first spacewalk of her career. Got my waist tether down, and I'm going to start working on getting the medium ORU bag on my BRT. All right, we copy. Okay. Once they're both outside of the Quest airlock, Kayla Barron will be tasked with closing the hatch thermal cover that they passed through earlier. Try to trend my other to the other side of the bag here. Okay. I need no. Okay, Kayla, I'm looking at you. I see. I don't see a heck of light. Do you have yours on yet? I do not, but I'll do it now. Yeah. Okay. I see two green lights. Headlamps are on. I'm looking for, I want you yaw to your left. I see three tabs up. And right safer handle is down, left safer handle is down. And I see your waist other on the rear lock. Handrail and your safety tether looks to be in a good config, and your ORU bag is nicely tendered to your left. Roger. And for you, Tom, I see two green lights one for WDS, one for HECA. I see three tabs up. I see two safety handles, crush and safer handles down. And I see your crew lock bag nicely off to your left there on your BRT. And your tethers look like they're in a good config. And my baseline hat check is completely half is dry. And for one, my half is dry as well. Okay, guys, that sounds like a good... Yeah, guys, that sounds like good buddy checks. And we heard the half baselines. If you just take a peek at your gloves, let us know how they look. And then we budgeted some time for translation adaptation. Take it as you feel like you need it. Um, and we'll stand by here quietly, and you guys let us know. And for EV1, my gloves unchanged from previous, they were pristine. And for EV2, I got a good baseline glove check. They look great. Okay, and okay, Kayla, and if you wouldn't mind just closing the hatch thermal cover, and if that doesn't stick to the magnet, you can also use that wire tie that's right there staged on handrail 0554. 
Baron is now being tasked with closing the hatch thermal cover that they passed through. They just completed buddy checks. Those are conducted periodically. All right, that's good news. Um, we'll stand by for translation adaptation. Roger, in work. These buddy checks are used to check on their spacewalking colleagues, uh, the camera, making sure that's on, that the tethers and tools are still in a good configuration. You'll also periodically hear a call out for the crew member to do a glove check, which they also just completed. Uh, the spacewalking astronauts have to be mindful of any sharp edges or small objects that could damage the integrity of their gloves, so they often need to stop and inspect them. They also got the cue to turn on their HECAs. This stands for High Definition Extravehicular Activity Mobility Unit Camera Assembly. It's a fancy way of saying, of asking the astronauts to turn on their HD cameras. This allows us to sometimes see the operation from an astronaut's point of view. You'll know we're taking the HECA cameras when you see number 22 in the corner. This means you're seeing the spacewalk through Tom Marshburn's eyes. The, uh, the box. Copy that, Tom. We got caught in a hand over there. You'll see a number 16 on your screen when Kayla Barron's heck of views are on display. And we reported that we're good to go if you guys are, Drew. Sorry about that, guys. We got caught in a hand over there. But uh, yes, you guys are go to start your translation out. I know you guys are, know where you're headed. I can. Uh, you're headed out to the starboard seat of cart, Tom, and you can let us know where you put, decide to put fair leads at the base of the seat of spur. And then, Kayla, you're heading out to ELC-3, and uh, we'll check in with you when you get to your green hook. We do have a couple cautions and warnings to read to you. Roger, and for two, can you confirm I'm heading Zenith at mile marker 8420? Affirmative, uh, Kayla. About the time that your feet are over PMM, you'll be looking for mile marker 8420, and that's where you'll head Zenith. Roger. And Drew, what is on the feet of Spur? Copy, Tom. Putting, that, uh, putting down that base fairly. Stand by at the circular handrail until you're fairly thin, Tom. Tom, as you head out. Fairly in place. Andrew. Copy, Tom. And your first action will be just temp stone your crew lock bag. And that'll be about in the area where you see the tip lee. Okay, copy. Tom, I'm coming up behind you on the tool box there. All right, I'm heading up to see the spur. Roger. Fairly in place. I see it. It looks great. The astronauts are now headed to their respective workstations outside of the space station. Kayla Barron will take a path uh, to the, ex the one that you see in blue here on your screen to the external logistics carrier number three where the spare SASA is mounted. Tom Marshburn will take the shorter path in red on the bottom third of your screen to Canada Arm 2, the robotic arm. Once configured, European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer will control the robotic arm and take Marshburn to the worksite. 
Copy that, Tom. And I can give you a specific mile marker if you're looking for, but if you, I think if you look out there to uh, in front of you, you'll be able to see where the Lee is. All right, copy. Looks like we're getting our first helmet camera of the day. Uh, you can see the number 16 in the corner, indicating this is NASA astronaut Kayla Barron's point of view. She's on her way to the external logistics carrier number three. And I'm up at the CETA handrail, getting ready to head out port as well. Okay. I'm going to let my safety cover kind of bend below you. It's good to me. Copy. Good eyes on it. See your progress, looking good. Baron will actually pass by the faulty S-band antenna. But she's going to carry on to the express logistics carrier number three. Copy that, Tom, and we think it's probably going to be about mile marker 8670. Anywhere in there is good for your clock bag. Copy. Here's the NTA. I see 8670. I'm going to put down my crew lock bag here. Copy that. Nine, eight, four, two, zero. Copy that, Kayla, and you'll head Zenith. And you'll see the GPS antennas. I see them, Drew. Okay, and the next uh, thing to look for is the FPMU, and then you're looking for a handrail at the base of that, 3613, for your green hook. And as you place your green hook, I'll give you those cautions and warnings. Roger. Listen. Once Baron gets there, she'll work to stow two work bags that she brought with her. Out to the CETA cart and looking for WIF-1 to grab that APFR. She'll also get out a tether and install it to the ELC-3. It'll be used later to temporarily stow the faulty SASA. On that handrail, eight six one or correction three six one three. Okay, you can drop your green hook there, and then if you look out to the port side there, you'll see the UHF antenna and the targe. You kind of thread the needle there. We just want you to avoid contact with both of those. If you do have inadvertent contact with the targe, let us know. We might have to sit still for a couple of minutes. Roger. And then the last warning I'll have for you is when you get out to ELC-3 face, as you're climbing up on it, I have one more for you. The crew lock bag is 10 stowed right there in front of the NTA, and I'm heading further outboard. Sounds good, Tom. Meet you at WIP-1. Copy. Drew, my green hook is down on B613, heading outboard. Copy that, Kayla. All sounds great. We're now getting live views from helmet camera number two belonging to Tom Marshburn. 
Okay, Tom, and it's uh, there on that WIFX, with WIF number one. Your call, whether that APFR, if you want to try to tend it back or put it on your BRT, and then you'll bring that back to the arm. And I'm past the UHF antenna. Copy, Kayla. You can see the word CETA on your screen. This stands for Crew and Equipment Translation Aid. Marshburn will stop here to set up the robotic arm. This involves installing a portable foot restraint and using it to get himself situated inside the robotic arm. The portable foot restraint is stored here on the CETA. Once installed and with the go from a flight director, he'll be ready for motion at the controls of Matthias Maurer. Since the portable foot restraint is outside of the station, uh, Marshburn did not have to bring the foot restraint with him. He'll install it back on the CETA once the spacewalk has concluded. Hey, Kayla, in one of our camera views, we thought we saw maybe your D5 camera was hanging a little low, and we just wanted to have you check to make sure it wasn't snagged on anything. Okay. Thanks for the check, though. Copy that. I'm at the whip and working on getting the APFR out of it. Copy that, Tom. And I am approaching the base of ELC-3. Okay, Kayla, this is just that reminder about the thesis. Where have you come up the outboard face of the ELC? It's in the upper right corner, that aft zenith corner. We just want to avoid contact with that thing. Roger, avoid contact with thesis. I'm on the LC3 heading Venus. Okay, you're exactly where we had hoped you'd be. You're doing very well. I know that you've got your checklist there of items that we're going to go through. We want to get that medium or U bag, crew lock bag staged. I can give you any additional words that you require there. Then we want to move that mutt ball stack mutt over to 8708, and we'll catch up with you after that. I've got what I need, and I'll check in if I have any questions. Andrew, um, I'm definitely out of black on black for the FP from the WIF, but uh, the paddles are not depressing currently. Working on getting the APFR out. Copy, Tom, checking. Moving around, see if I'm side loading it in any way. Yeah, Tom, that's a good call. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron is now tasked with stowing two work brags that she brought out with her. She'll also put out a tether and install it to the ELC-3. It'll be used later on to temporarily stow the SASA. Hey, Tom, we're, um, so we want to try to get your hand circumferentially around the collar and then cycle it 
to completely through its range of motion, use two hands if you're able, just for cycling the caller only. Ah, I see, yep. Did get a little further that time. Titles are depressing now. You're getting a live look now of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn as he configures the portable foot restraint, all in preparation to go on to the robotic arm. And it's free. Thanks a lot. A lot tighter you than bet. Cool. The medium or you back, stay interested, and I'm working on getting the crew lock bag out. Sounds great. Hey, Kayla, when, when you... Copy that, Tom. Um, we'll, we'll meet you at the arm. And, uh, Kayla, for you, if you wouldn't mind checking your HECA light for us and then power cycle it if you don't see it on. The light is on. Do you still like me to power cycle it? Checking. Yeah, Kayla, if you would power cycle it, uh, two pushes of the button. NASA astronaut Drew Morgan, our ground IV today, is working with astronaut Kayla Barron on getting her HECA camera on. This allows us to see the EVA from Kayla Barron's point of view. If you're just joining us today, two NASA astronauts are on a spacewalk outside of the International Space Station. They'll be working with the SASA, or S-band antenna subassembly. Setting up for the uh, EVA to publish. Uh, Roger, I'm doing well out here, and I'm just going to execute worksite setup for the cup checklist page. Already okay. on the ground. I'm ready for the uh, arm movement. Well, all right, we're ready. Okay, we'll we'll ready stand by. Over to GCA to publish APFR install position. Greg Andrew. We're ready. We'll stand by. Okay, copy, Roger. I'm ready for the GCA to publish for the APFR install. Happy Drew, you said stand by. No, you guys are go. We're gonna just, we will pull out and while well, you guys. Uh, work this. Kayla knows what she needs to do, so the comm is yours. And Roger Matias, I'm ready for the GCA. You copy. You're ready for the maneuver to GCA to publish APFR install position. It's going to be about a half meter in Nader and about a meter after we're to set it up. I'll let you know when motion starts. Copy. Motion, Tom. That's a good motion. About 10 centimeters to go. And here comes your station aft motion. Copy. Good motion. Weather. You're getting a great view now of Canadarm2, the robotic arm that will be used for today's operation. GCA. GCA complete. NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn will take the robotic arm to and from the work sites. And I copied. Uh... I believe it's Papa Papa Fox 6, Drew. Yeah, that's a good readback, Tom. 
Yep, that's a good and so install at 12, and we expect that probably pitch and yaw are already set, but just we, yeah, we'll take a confirmation of that once you're installed. Yeah, I can uh, confirm that the pitch is good. And I'll check on the rest in a moment. The movements of the robotic arm today conducted by European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. Okay, as far as uh, black on black, good rotate test, good pull test, and the pitch knob is out. And we're in Papa Papa checking on the Fox and the Six. Good check so far, Tom. And Kayla, we did get your HECA back, so your actions were successful. Thank you. Sure. NASA astronaut working now with ESA astronaut Matthias Maurer to configure the robotic arm. The space station is now flying over the ocean and will shortly reach the eastern coast of Sierra Leone. Okay, Fox and Six are confirmed. Okay, Tom, that sounds like your APFR is in a good configuration, and so we'll have you retrieve your crew lock bag and put it on your BRT, and then I'll be ready to talk you through your tether swap to the arm. Okay, copy that. And just for SA, I've got the Mutball segment stage on 8708. Moving on to the next test. It's setting up for the stanchion mount bolt. Looking good so far, well, Kayla. While, while I'm here, I'll get the quarter turn fastener. Copy that. You're going for those three quarter turns.
Andrew, I'm going to get the two more NATO ones and save the other one for when I get to the other side or Tom's here. The two are now. Okay, copy that, Kayla. So that could you give us a total then that is that you've already worked? Two total are removed. Copy that. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron is now working to tie back some insulation layers on the spare SASA. This is a task that will help them later on in their spacewalk. I got good PGT checks, uh, Cal complete, and I'm ready for PGT things for the expansion Mount Bolt uplock. Okay, we're looking for Bravo 7 clockwise 2. We'll be driving this bolt. I've got Bravo 7 clockwise 2 set. Okay, we're expecting 9 to 10 turns. And we expect it to socket. And we expect it'll spring back when it's fully released. Starting turns for nine to ten turns. And I've got nine to ten turns. Um, it, there is play in it now, so it is springing back as expected. Uh, bolt release out of the launch, or well, I guess it's driven out of the launch block. All right, that's great news. And you can go ahead and stow your PGT, and then you can start working the uh, reps and adjustables. Roger. I already have the. Um, Set stage for the tent and clamshell. I'm going to work NZGL caps, and then I will stage the Medusa tether for um, the shirt and scarf. That sounds good. You're hearing the voice of NASA astronaut Kayla Barron as she communicates to our ground IV, Drew Morgan, about some tasks at the ELC-3 that will help prep the spare SASA to be moved. And Tom, just checking back in with you, and uh, we're just looking for, when you tell us that uh, your green hook is locked, I can talk you through the other steps, or you can continue to work ahead. I am... The green hook locks currently. Okay, copy. Through my green hook, my green hook is locked. Okay, I understand that your green hook is locked on your red. That's affirmed. 
green hook is locked on your red reel, so now you can attach your yellow hook to the arm lee forward stanchion and then give us those checks, yellow hook. Okay, that's it work. As NASA astronaut Kayla Barron preps the spare SASA, you just heard ground IV Drew Morgan checking in with NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn as he configures the robotic arm. Looks great, Kayla. My yellow hook is closed and locked on the forward part of the in the sector in rail. Going for my green, I'm going to rest to it first. Sounds good, just let us know where you put it. We're starting to get some Earth views down below. The space station is currently passing over the western coast of Mali. My green hook is at 8790. We copy, Tom. Andrew, I'm complete with staging the MLI tether. And if you agree, I'm going to start working on removing the scent and clamshell. We'll go with that. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron working to remove some covers. Yep, you've got the calm, Tom. Meanwhile, Tom Marshburn is getting ready to go on the robotic arm. You are, and the calm is yours. All right. Yes, Russia, ready for the GCA to publish for the APFR ingress. And copy, Tom, you ready for maneuver to GCA to publish APFR ingress position. Good copy. This movement's going to be about a half meter zenith, and if you could just keep an eye on that ingress aid for us, Tom. We can't quite see it in the camera, so just the T handle looks like it was kind of close to a hand roll. As we move zenith, just let us know if it gets too close. I can move it a little bit, stand by one. I'm going to move it a little bit away from it. Okay, that's complete, and it's out of the way. Great, right, thanks. Well, I'll let you know when the motion starts. Copy. Tom Marshburn now switching his tethers over to attach himself to the robotic arm. Soon he'll get into the foot restraint where Matthias Maurer can take him to the work site. Both astronauts will meet at the Port 1 Trust to remove the degraded SASA. That's the published position. How's that look? Looks good. GCA. GCA complete. Thanks, sir. On. Congrats. Okay, Tom, you can attach your waist tether and ingress uh, to the ingress aid or on the ingress aid itself uh, or at the tether point, your choice, and then uh, go ahead and ingress the APFR.
Astronaut Tom Mershburn is, is visible on screen. You can tell it's him because of the red stripes on his spacesuit. You can see that his feet are flying free, but they'll soon be attached to the robotic arm. Okay. And for Tom, I'm ingress. I'm ready for the maneuver. Okay, Tom, I just would just have you tethers. check your tools and tethers are clear. Ingress aid is pulled in close to you. Tools and tethers are clear. Ingress aid is in close. Okay, then you can work with Raja and Matthias and go to the move it to the gimbal back off position. Yes, Raja, ready for the maneuver. We'll maneuver to gimbal back off position. Brakes are coming off. All right, this will be about a two meter forward move. Uh, we'll let you know when motion starts. Yep. Starting motion. Very good motion. Tom, while you're in motion, we'll take a glove and a half. Sure. Meter to go. Copy. Gloves are pristine. Help us dry. We copy, Tom. And we're setting up a show gas for you, Tom. Copy. The trail going, Taylor. I did. I got the clam shoulder moves and it tended back towards the high pressure gas tank, as we hoped. Okay. And I am working on tents as we speak. Nice work. Tom, here comes the Joe Cass. It's going to be uh, mostly zenith and some aft motion. It's going to take about two minutes. Stop. Start in motion. Take good motion. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron reporting that she's wrapping up her tasks um, at the first stop of the ELC-3 today, where the spare SASA lives. She's removed some multi-layer insulation. And she's also driven a stanchion mounting belt out of the launch position.
Does that help? We're setting up some cameras and they'll be ready to maneuver you to the GCA to publish gimbal position. Okay. I'm ready for the maneuver to GCA. Okay, we copy your uh, ready, Tom, and with that, we'll go ahead and start GCA to publish gimbal position. It's going to be about starboard about a meter and then aft about a meter and a half. Okay, uh, start GCA, and let's start with what you just said. All right, starting motion. Do good motion. And stop motion. Okay, that's the end of your starboard motion. And here comes about uh, aft, about a meter and a half. I copy that. Let's see if I can work with this here. And um, I do need starboard about another 10 centimeters. We're in a brief but expected handover period between satellites. We expect to get our live views of our spacewalking astronauts back soon. That motion. Hey, that motion stopped. And then GCA. Copy, GCA complete. And brakes are up. Copy. Working the uh, gimbal lock bolts. Okay, we're with you, Tom. Let us know how it looks to you. Uh, those, you can adjust the gimbal as you need to to get those bolts locked uh, into their, or rotated into their locked position. And once they're engaged, we want you to push inward on the base of the antenna to ensure that that's, the septum is seated against those spacer blocks. Uh, we do have a caution here for you that we don't want you to use more than 7.7 .7 pounds of force because that can actually dislodge them, take the, let the bolts rotate out of position. Okay. Just so you know, they are not easily coming out of the, uh, over that lip on the ramp. I don't want to put too much force on them. And Tom, does it look like you have pretty good access to all four from this position? It does. I'll try to move it around. I didn't get any motion on any of them to start with. I'm going to try to move the septum a little bit. Okay, there's one, we're jiggling the septum. There's three out of the third position.
And Drew, I have the uh, clamshell and tent tethered down and tucked in, I think, sufficiently for it to allow me to translate across. I'm just wa wondering if you think I should start working the ERAD for the launch bolt. Yeah, Kayla, we think that's the next best step. So we'll work towards uh, getting your ERAD on, give us those checks, and then we'll start working those bolts. Kayla Barron reporting out that she has finished removing some layers of insulation from the spare SASA. This is after she drove the stanchion mount bolt out of its launch position. And now that she's working ahead of schedule, she's doing some tasks that was planned for the next time she was supposed to be here at this workstation. Just doing a little bit of tasks to get ahead. Sun's going down if you guys want to adjust those visors. Drew, I've got all four out of the unlock. Copy that, Tom. That means I'm going to need uh, I'm going to need a little more GCA. Go one side than the other. That sounds good. You can. Yep, I'm good. Work with the uh, work with the team up there with Matthias and Raja, and we'll give the comm over to you. And it sounds like Kayla's good to go while she's getting her ERAD set up. And Drew, I'll start working on bolt one, which is my right shoulder. So I'm upside down, then I'll switch over to two, three, and then four. We're getting them in the locked position, but not working them yet. Copy. You're just engaging them, but not you're not actually and doing the drive yet. Matthias Roger, ready for uh, GCA? We are ready. Uh, where do you want to go? Uh, 20 centimeters starboard, and y'all left. Yep, 20 centimeters starboard, and then y'all left. We'll do the uh, starboard sir. first, and then uh, y'all get in there. It breaks her off. Okay. And confirm station starboard. Starboard, that's affirmed. Any motion? Good motion. Is that a beer? Stop motion. Stopping motion. I'm going to ask for a little uh, station aft about 10 centimeters. I've got my ingress aid. I've got your clearance for high gain. Copy, station aft, 10 centimeters. Good copy. That's a good motion. Good motion. Okay, there's your 10 centimeters. And uh, now the yaw left, body yaw left, 30, 30 degrees. Copy, yaw left, 30 degrees. Good motion. Okay, stop motion. We've got a hand over coming over. Stopping motion, that's about five degrees. And uh, one more uh, station, Venus, 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters, Zenith. Good copy. Good motion. Stop motion. Good motion. And NGCA. GCA complete. Copy. And wait for break to on. Break to on. Copy. Andrew, I have the thread on my PGT with a good pull test. The wobble is now on the socket caddy, also a good pull test, and I am getting in position for the launch bolts. Copy, Kayla, and, and uh, we got a hand over Kayla. Can I go ahead? 
Yeah, we're about 30 seconds to hand over, so Kayla, we're going to have you do a glove and hap check, and we'll catch you on the other side of the handover. Roger, we'll stand by. And Matias and uh, Roger are ready for a GTA back to the original position and then to the other side. So we'll undo what we did. That's going to be taking you about 20 centimeters later. We'll take out the yaw and then take you back to port. That's good copy. Kayla Barron now reporting out that she's done some tasks ahead of time with the extra time that she's had. Um, originally, she was supposed to prep the spare Sasa, head over to the P1 truss with Tom Marshburn, and then they would both go back to the spare together and work to loosen some bolts. However, since Barron is already at the spare Sasa, she decided to do some tasks ahead of time. And, uh, I mean, just for the nader part, so I'll take uh, motion to be off and the uh, port. I can work on the other side. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Brakes are coming back off. Here comes the yaw. Marshall. Okay, the yaw is back out. Here comes uh, 10 centimeters station forward. Stop motion. Stopping motion there, and then you're ready for your 20 centimeters port. Ready for the port. Starting your port motion. Motion. And motion stops. How's that look? Working out clear. I'll take uh, station aft again. Give me another 10 centimeters there. Okay, another 10 centimeters station aft. Moving. Good copy. In motion. Stop motion. Okay, stop motion. Waiting for brakes on. Brakes are on. Confirm GCA complete. GCA complete. Andrew, are you back with us? Yeah, Caleb, we're back. We just were waiting for the GCA complete. I have PGT settings for you when you're ready. We have uh, Bravo 4 counterclockwise 2 set, and I'm in position to drive on your go. Okay, we're go for that. You're on the low gain antenna side, the side that we were expecting. 11 to 19 turns on the PGT, if you're counting at the PGT. And just let us know whether you're working the forward or the aft. 11 to 19 with the PGT, and I'll start with the forward. Copy. Drew, I'm waking up my uh, PGT. It looks like all bolts are in place, ready to be torqued. Okay, Tom, your settings are Alpha 5, clockwise 2. Alpha 5, clockwise 2. Baron reporting out that she's ready to work on the release of two launch bolts connected to the spare SASA. You can see her now working with the pistol grip tool. I'm just going to put down my end effector to keep me a little closer to structure here and then try. Bolts. Sounds like a great plan. The pistol grip tool, or PGT, is basically a cordless drill. Andrew, I'm ready for the settings again, please. Alpha 5, clockwise 2, you're driving, and it'll only be three turns. Clockwise two. All right, that's a good read back, and we're going to do these in order one, two, three, four. So we're starting at the bolt on your right side towards your head. Three turns will take torque turns and light. Copy, you understand.
Marshburn is working to install gimbal locks that give the spacewalkers a little more control of the degraded unit in its move from P1 and over to the express logistics carrier number three. It just means that uh, the communications antenna won't make any sudden unpredicted moves. Drew, I'm at 19 turns. I want to confirm whether you expect it to spring out when released. Kayla, yes, we are expecting that it would spring out. I don't think it has yet. Do you have a go to put a few more turns on it? Yeah, Kayla, you can go ahead and keep driving. Roger. Drew, I got 2.5 turns. The torque, green light on bolt number one. For bolt number two. Copy that, Tom, on bolt number one, and then you're moving over to bolt two. Left shoulder. Copy. And Drew, the forward bolt has sprung out. That was 25 turns total, starting with the aft. Good words, and uh, understand you're moving over to the aft. And Drew, I got uh, 2.1 turns, 2.2 turns and torque to two decimal three. One for the left knee, all three. Okay, and Tom, it happened on the bolt number one. We didn't hear the torque on that, but we did hear that uh, your turn's in green light on bolt number one, the first one you did. It was 2.5, it was to a program. Copy that, 2.5. Copy. Stand by, Tom. Stand by. Tom, we're going to have you double check PGT settings and just read back what you see. Uh, I see. It was at an alpha one. Thought I had an alpha two. Over to alpha two. Starting back with bolt one. Tom, we're Through expecting alpha, alpha five. Bolt. Alpha five alpha for you, five. Tom. I missed that. Happy thanks at alpha five. Tom Marshburn now getting his pistol grip tool configured to drive four total gimbal locks. Again, this helps control the motion of the faulty assassin unit. That one took 23 turns, two, three. And wondering if you think I should work a socket swap and head back to Tom or head to view the launch bolts on the other side. Copy, Kayla. We're checking. Uh, one thing that we needed to go back on is, and during the handover, we missed your happen glove. Just confirm that those were both good. We assume they were. Yep. Hap is dry. Glove check is good. Okay, Kaylin, just give us a moment here. We're talking next steps for you. Roger. Andrew, I've got 3.1 and 6.8 on the torque. Green light for bolt one. Copy that, Tom. We got 6.8 that time and a green light bolt one, and so we'll be on to bolt two. That's a good bolt on bolt one. On to bolt two. Tom Marshburn confirms that he's finished driving the first of four gimbal lock bolts. And Kayla, for you, we'll just have you go ahead and remove the ERAD from your, go back to your socket swap, go back to your original socket setup, and then we're going to have you head over to see Tom. When you come off of ELC, we do want to make sure that we get a check of your safer handles. Okay, that's all in work. Drew, I've got his, uh, green light 6.8 and one turn on bolt two. Copy that, Tom. 
Marsh Burn confirms that he has the second of four gimbal lock bolts driven. Meanwhile, Kayla Barron worked with Ground IV Drew Morgan to get her tools configured, and she'll start making her way over to the P1 truss with Tom Marshburn shortly. Bolting down, I got two more bolts to go. Roger, and I'm just working on my socket swap, and then I'll head back your way. Copy. He rides on the socket caddy with a good full test, working the wobble. Drew. Green light, seven and 1.2 turns, full three. Copy that, Tom, copy Kayla. Go full four. We're good on bolt three, so we're ready for four. Right side, toward your boot. Okay. And that bolt is not all the way in the slot. It's stuck about halfway. Been working uh, working that one. I'm gonna go and torch it down halfway there, if you're all right with that. Checking. Fixed. Doesn't, doesn't come out easily. Doesn't come out at all. Also now it's not going in. I think it uh, dock its way out a little bit with the other bolts. So I can see a slight gap in the slot between the bolt head and the septum, but still wedged in the slot. Copy checking. Tom, we're going to hold there for a moment and just talk about this and decide whether we're going to uh, try to drive this one down at all. And guys, the last we checked, we were about 20 minutes ahead of the timeline and our limiting uh, consumable at that point was Medox, 640 EVA. Roger. And uh, Drew, I got the wobble socket back on my PGT with a good pull test. Both of my safer handles are down, and I'm going to start heading back towards Tom. Sounds great, Kayla. Great job, Kayla. Thanks your time. We were talking about this last bolt a little bit. Alba? Yeah, Kayla, absolutely great that we are doing very well on time right now. Tom, we wanted to have you check with bolt four if you were able to back that bolt off by hand one turn. Give it a try. Oh, the bolt head itself. Affirmative. Work. No, uh, it is. The lob is just flipping over it. I've got a little bit of motion out of it there. I'm going to stow my PGT and play with it here. If you're just joining us, we're just over one hour into the planned six and a half hour spacewalk with NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn. Marshburn sent the first, spent the first portion of the hour configuring the robotic arm that he took to the P1 work site where the degraded SASA lives. Meanwhile, Kayla Barron worked at the Express Logistics Carrier Number 3 to do some prep work on the spare SASA. She worked diligently and got some tasks done ahead of time. Marshburn is in the 
in process of installing four gimbal locks to reduce the motion of the degraded SASA. motion of the bolt itself built the uh, sort of halfway point, half engaged. The, uh, the nut below the bolt head is, uh, does open freely. We copy, Tom. We're still talking about it a little bit. A little bit. Uh, jiggle, the stuff really doesn't jiggle anymore. Feel the bolt engaged. I believe when I was working bolts two and three, it, bolt four walked out just a half of. Yeah, we copy, Tom. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have you reset your PGT to Alpha 1 clockwise 2, Alpha 1 clockwise 2, lower setting, and then we're going to have you drive on that. Alpha, reset again, setting. You said alpha two? Alpha one, clockwise two. Alpha one. Alpha one, clockwise two. I am passing the UHF antenna. Copy, Kayla. Clockwise, clockwise two. Point five on the torque green light and two and a half turns, two point three turns. Okay, Tom, with that we're calling those four good gimbal bolts. You can stow your PGT and then you can work with the arm to maneuver to the P one retrieval back off position. And uh before we do that, I just wanted to let Kayla know that once you get there, Kayla, you can start to work those electrical connectors, P2, P3, and P4, and give us the uh, words on the back side. Roger, that's in work now. Go ahead, Tom, let's come. All right, thanks. And Matthias and Raj are ready for the uh, maneuver to the back off position. My tools and others are clear. Copy, brakes are off, and copy, you're ready for the maneuver to the P1 retrieval back off position. Uh, it's going to be mostly ISS forward and port motion, and we'll also take out a little bit of what we did on some of that GCA. I'll copy. let you know when we're ready to start. Copy. That's a good copy for me. Marshburn reported out that all four gimbal locks have been installed to reduce the motion of the degraded SASA as they both work to move it to the ELC-3 shortly. Barron is still making her way over to the P1 site to help Marshburn remove the degraded SASA, and Marshburn is working with the crew aboard the space station to get into the right configuration to do this. Starting uh, ISS forward motion, about a meter and a half. Copy. I see good motion. All right, here comes uh, port motion. Be good motion. Ten centimeters. Here comes a little bit of nader motion. Okay, that's the uh, position that we're going to set up for a joint OCAS. Take us a little bit, and it'll be about a four and a half minute move. Okay, Tom, before we do that Thank next you. maneuver. Go ahead, Kayla. Thank you. 
Um, all of the, all three of the NZGLs are demated, levers full aft over center, and for all three, uh, no FOD, no butt pins, and good EMI bands. I'm assessing now whether I need to wire tie or adjustable them out of the way. Copy that, Kayla. It sounds like those are good checks. And then once you assess whether or not you need to wire tie, then we'll have you move towards the BRT handrail 3618. And Tom, for you, before we do this next maneuver, we got a little checklist of things we wanted to run through with you when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Tom, we're going to have you check your tools and tethers are clear and your ingress aid is stowed, pulled close to your body. Probably keep your visor up because it's going to be nighttime for a couple more minutes and then check your glove heaters. Okay, good call. The glove heaters, my tools and tethers are clear. And ingress aid is pulled towards me. The visor's in a good position. Okay, set your cooling if you need to and then verify your heels are secured. Think heels out this entire time. And then a glove and hat for us. Half is dry. And gloves are still pristine. Happy on the cooling, I'm good. Fun bit of history here. Back in 2007, Expedition 16 astronaut Rick, Mustac Mus Rick Mustracchio and Clay Anderson relocated the S band antenna subassembly from P6 to P1, where the astronauts are working now. Thomas, we mostly taken you aft and then zenith. Motion. Back in 2007, Mastracchio and Anderson reported having the same difficulty that Tom Marshburn had with that with that fourth bolt. Hey, Kayla, while the arm is flying, this we can give you a feature. Yeah. 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 Um, Drew, I've got Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2 set. I think if I understood the procedure correctly, I can break torque uh, now and then stand by for Tom's go to continue. Yeah, Kayla, those are good settings, and you have a go to break torque, one turn only. Okay, break torque, one turn only. You can hear now that the astronauts Tom Marshburn and Caleb Barron will be working together on this step. Marshburn will tether the SASA before it's set completely free with the release of the stanchion bolt that Barron is removing. This is the one that attaches the antenna unit to the P1 truss structure. The view you see here live on your screen is Kayla Barron retrieving her pistol grip tool and configuring it to break torque on that stanchion bolt that attaches the degraded SASA to the space station. I believe torque is broken one turn. I just want to confirm I was fully seated on the bolt. It's a little hard to tell because it's in the I'm stanchion out pretty deep there. 
checking the PGT up. Yep, and Fork is broken, Drew. Copy that, Kayla. I was on it originally. Yeah, Kayla, if you had experienced any running Stand torque by. at all, we uh, we expected that you broke torque if you're experiencing some running torque. And I'm just standing by for Tom still to continue turn. Copy that. Just wrapping up. All right, Joe Gans is complete, and we are ready for maneuver to GCA to publish P1 retrieval position. And I am also ready for the maneuver to publish. Can you give us just a second to set up the maneuver, and we'll let you know when motion starts. Copy. All right, Tom, there'll be uh, three moves here. We're going to take in Nader, then starboard, and then forward. Sounds good. And starting with uh, two meters Nader. All right, uh, Kayla, ready for the GCA? I'm ready. All right, ready for GCA to publish. Here we go. Motion. Tom, with the nighttime and the camera views, we don't have the best clearance of your head in the, so just uh, obviously keep us informed. Will do. There's Nader left. Here comes a little bit of uh, starboard motion. Copy. Motion. Okay, and then here comes uh, a meter ISS forward. Copy. Yeah, sorry. Marshburn gave Kayla Barron the go to release the stanchion bolt that she was working on releasing with her pistol grip tool, meaning that Tom Marshburn confirms that he has a grasp on the degraded SASA and it's tethered correctly. Meanwhile, the astronauts aboard the International Space Station gave a go that they are ready to move the robotic arm. And stop motion. Okay, stopping motion about 30 centimeters short of published. All right, when you get brakes on, I'll rep to it. Hey, brakes are on, GCA complete. And you're going for P1 SAS retrieval. Copy. All right, I've got a rep to the handrails of the RFG. And I have two hands on it. Roger. Bye. I am ready if uh, everybody's ready for either the final torque. All right, Tom, yeah, if you and Taylor are good. You have a go to release. We're expecting about 18 turns. We want you to maintain some pressure on that bolt head. Roger. Adjust my body position a little bit here. Starting turn. Nine turns, and I'm just gonna readjust the. Set. Kayla, we were just gonna have you double check your PGT settings. It looks like we might be a little higher counterclockwise speed right now. Uh, yep, I think it got knocked into counter three. Back in counter two now. All right, that's a good check. The degraded unit is in a position known as a soft dock. It's connected to the space station, but only that stanchion bolt is keeping it in place. Kayla Barron is working to remove it. Seven 
the next step in the procedures after this is accomplished is to move it over to the express logistics carrier number three and temporarily stow it using a rigid tether that Kayla Barron had installed earlier in the spacewalk. Andrew, could you say again total turns I'm looking for here? We're expecting about 18. Andrew? We do expect it to spring up. A little light touch. Andrea? Uh, that count could, could be a little off, Drew, because it's kind of difficult to tell if it's fully seated. Um, but I'm going to get it back on there and then some more turns. Yep, go ahead with some additional turns. It is released. Keys removed. I'm going to stow that. And then give me a chance to just reposition myself, Tom. Okay. Just have like that both hands. All right. Okay. That's. Kayla, that sounds good. And we're just going to have you uh, pull axially as close as you can to the uh, center of gravity down there and light touch from Tom as he's already commented. Tom, could you please pull it away from the stanchion mount? It looks pretty straight. Coming a little way. I think I got arm motion, not stanchion motion. Uh, the gap's increasing. Okay, I'm going to continue to pull. Yep, keep going. Pulling. It might be side loaded. Okay, I'm going to pull it back a little bit towards me. Yep, that's looking great. Okay, it's okay, removed. Now. It's removed, about two hands and a rep. On a free to great assassin. Great Tom. news. Oh, nice. Teamwork. The degraded SASA is now officially free from the International Space Station. Happy your go for the maneuver to ELC 3, Tap Stow back off position. Hi, you're ready coming off. Copy. They just got the go to move it over to the Express Logistics Carrier number three. It will ride along the robotic arm with Tom Marsh burned to the work site. The uh, corridor is clear. Copy that. No wire tie needed, and then we'll meet you out at ELC-3. Roger, heading that way now. I'm taking a look at you real quick, Kayla, since we'll see each other for seven minutes. We have a chance. I see you. We'll Safety tether. Faster. Safety tether really looks good. Thanks. Heading now forward. I'll see you out there, Tom. Yep, see you in about seven minutes. Enjoy the ride. All right, Tom, you ready for motion? Ready for motion. We'll start in GCA. It's going to be about a meter and a half aft, little port, and then two meters in. Kind of back to where you started from a little bit ago. Copy. Start in motion, aft. You good motion? Centimeters here. We're taking about uh, 15 centimeters port. Okay. And then about two meters unit. Copy. And I'm seeing good motion all around.
You're getting now the helmet camera views of NASA astronaut Kayla Barron as she translates back to the Express, Express Logistics Carrier number three. Astronaut Tom Marshburn is taking the express route over to the work site. He's taking the robotic arm while carrying the degraded SASA that the two of them just worked together to break free. Hey guys, the sun will be coming up and we're about 50 minutes ahead on the timeline. Roger. Tom, this is going to be about a seven minute long Joe cast. It's going to be coarse motion. Copy. Mostly port motion to take you over towards uh, ELC 3. Copy all. Both astronauts are making their way out to the next workstation, the Express Logistics Carrier 3. Their next task is to temporarily stow the degraded SASA. They're going to put it on a rigid tether that Kayla Barron had installed earlier. This task is expected to take about 25 minutes. However, our two spacewalking astronauts are making great time. Third of the way through the move. Copy. They reported that they're a third of the way over to the work site, and as they may w make their way over, I'm going to take a question from Twitter. We have a question from Shazzy, who asks, are they always hooked, connected to the ISS during spacewalk? That's a great question, and the answer is yes, they are always tethered to the space station. You may often hear the Capcom or the ground IV working with the astronauts working on tether configurations. For instance, earlier Tom Marshburn had to get his tethers from the space station and onto the robotic arm. However, in the unlikely event that they become untethered, Marshburn and Barron both have safer units on. SAFER is a shorter way of saying simplified aid for EVA rescue. If you're familiar with the jetpack, the SAFERs are not too far off. They're worn, worn during spacewalks as a precaution only, and they're only used if an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station. In this unlikely situation, the astronaut would use their, their SAFER to propel themselves back to the space station, just like a jetpack. See you there. Inside all nice and prepped.
the plane tail and the line's gone. Beginning about the clam shell, Tom? I can just see that it's off. Yep, it is. Yep. It's work down there. And then over your right shoulder. Hey, Kayla, we've got a photo request for you. Yes, sir. At a time that you think makes the most sense, we'd like you to get a photo of Bolt 4, Gimbal Bolt 4, that was uh, not in the exact configuration we expected. And if you wouldn't mind at any point, whether that's out as Tom's flying in or uh, while he's working his mass bolts, anytime, not absolutely required, but it'll be helpful if you can. You just heard the voice of NASA astronaut Kayla Barron. It will be her first spacewalk while Tom Marshburn is on his fourth, or sorry, his fifth. Marshburn's first three spacewalks took place over the course of the 15-day STS-127 mission back in 2009. The mission saw the delivery of the Japanese-built exposed facility and the experiment logistics module exposed section to the space station. The fourth spacewalk of his career occurred in 2013 when Marshburn worked with Chris Cassidy to mitigate an ammonia coolant leak. You're in position hold. We're setting up here, and we'll be ready to maneuver to GCA to publish for the SAS attempt stow position. Copy. Kayla, do you want me to hold it up to you for a picture, or just wait till later? Um, is it currently simple to four on my side? Yeah, let me let me give it a shot. Yeah. And Tom, we're loaded up, so just let us know when you're ready. Okay, uh, ready for the uh, GCA to publish? Yeah. Yeah. Starting GCA will be about uh, two and a half meters later. Copy. Not sure if I got it there. I'm going to get a little closer to you right now. Good motion. Good motion. Kayla, Tom, just confirm you're clear on the high gain antenna from the EL23. And Tom can confirm I am. Hey, thanks. Got it tended uh, forward. One meter to go. Did you? Stop motion. You can uh, confirm stop motion? Stop motion. That motion about 30 centimeters short of the published. What do you think, Kayla? I think we're good. I think we can get it on. It's okay. so comfortable. All right, in GCA. Happy GCA complete. And uh, I can hold it up so you can get that picture right now if you'd like. Okay. Or before we pop it in. Say again. I can turn the uh, high gain around to you for a picture if you'd like now okay. or a little bit later. All right. Yeah, let's do it now. Okay. A little closer for you than that last one. Tell me when you're good. Watch the uh, high gate antenna on the spare over here. You're a little close. Copy. And um, mutt's in the way, and I don't really want to move it too much. All right. We can just do it later. Uh, stand by. Okay. I can rotate it that way if you like. That's good. Stay right there. All right. Uh, yeah, I 
think I got several pictures of it there. Could it be one closest to the high gain antenna? Uh, yeah, there's two of them. And the one closest to the high gain, that's... Yeah, that's important. I got photos. Okay. I'm handing it over to you to... Uh, please keep control for now. I am. And control. you can rotate the handrail toward the up. And let's see. It'll lift this end up. Yeah. Um, Tom, if you could just rotate it so that it's RFD facing up. There you go. I see. And we're almost in there. Just need to straighten out. And if you could lift your end up. Work. And a bit further, your end needs to go uh, toward forward and up a little bit. That. That's looking pretty good. Um, the jaws aren't fully, the pedals aren't fully popped out. There they go. And I'll lock them now. And let me put my my rip on it. All right, I still have a hand on it and a rip. How's your? All right, I've got an independent ret. It's a large, small ret from the handrail of the degraded SAFA to the ELC3 grid, and paddles are uh, jaws closed, paddles out, and locked. So you have to go to remove your ret, Tom. Copy. It's really stable on there. And. going to have to go, um, let's see, uh, Matthias Raspberry, I'm going to need you to head up about 10 centimeters. I've got good clearance. Um, the SASA is just above your helmet now, Tom. You may need to lean back. Stand by. The brakes are coming off, and you're in a body frame now, and you want 10 centimeters head up. Body frame, that's a firm. Got good clearance, and 10 centimeter heads up. Got you starting motion. Motion. And stop motion. Stop motion. Waiting for brakes on. You're hearing the voices of Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, and as Tom communicates to the operators of the robotic arm, Matthias Maurer and his backup, Rajachari, he's giving commands so he can hand off the degraded SASA to Kayla Barron, who will work to stow the SASA on the express logistics carrier. To publish to uh, the uh, spare site. Are you ready for me? We're in a brief but expected handover period between satellites right now, getting a live view of Mission Control in Houston. First, we're going to take out the. Uh, we're going to give you 10 centimeters body down. Copy. Motion. Okay, next we're going to give you uh, a meter body left. Copy. There has been a lot of back and forth between the work sites. Uh, Kayla Barron first starting off um, in her original position coming out of the Quest airlock, heading over to the Express Logistics Carrier 3. She then went back to the P1 truss where Tom Marshburn was to help remove the degraded SASA. They've both now gone back to the Express Logistics Carrier where they're stowing the degraded SASA. Fortunately for their next step, they're going to stay here at the Express Logistics Carrier and retrieve the spare. If you remember earlier, Kayla Barron did a lot of tasks to get ahead on this activity. Okay, that's the published position. How's that look? I'm going to need to uh, be looking maybe another uh, 10 centimeters. Well, actually, let's stick with the uh, body forward, uh, 20 centimeters. Got good clearance. 
Okay, 20 centimeters body forward, moving. And Griff, is clear. Motion. All right, there's uh, 20 centimeters. Um, it looks good. And then GCA. GCA complete. Brakes are on. Okay. Drew, I'm here at the uh, site. I believe I've got to get rid of this. He's pit fins. Yeah, good words, Tom. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. First of all, tremendous choreography right up to, through this point. Um, you guys right now are about an hour ahead of the timeline. The limited consumable is still Medox about seven hours, so plenty of time. We would take like to get a glove and half check from both of you, and then, yes, we're going to start working the shirt and scarf. One half is dry, gloves remain pristine, unchanged from uh, Chris. And my half is dry. Uh, my gloves look good. I do have some black smudges on my fingertips. I'm trying to hold it up to my camera for you. We're checking, Kayla. Seeing that? Okay. Is that a good view? We're going to continue, Kayla. We see them, and um, we are good with that. Okay. And Tom, I see you found these other. I did. We're now approaching the two-hour mark out of our planned six-and-a-half-hour spacewalk. NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron working diligently on their task of replacing a degraded communications antenna system. They're now about an hour ahead of schedule. The SASA or S band antenna subassembly is used to transmit. I'm not sure I can reach that. Is, it, is the uh, shirt and scarf both tethered, Tom? Uh, no, the scarf is not. I okay. see tether points over on your side. It's like they're rotated from what we expected a bit. Okay. Do you want to pass the yeah. adjustable through to me? Yes, we can work that. I just can't. I got to be careful because we got the low yeah. antenna near me. Right? Yeah. Might need a GCA to like get to you. Just try kind of passing it, like let it um, yeah. float. Yeah. It might have a red on it. I think. Yeah. If you remove your oh, red, yeah. I should probably. I would probably be able to get it, Tom. Okay. This antenna is used to transmit low-rate voice and data between the space station with the flight controllers on the ground here in Houston using S-band radio frequencies. I'm just going to take a second to make sure the RET port. This RET appears to be locked out, Tom. Is that intentional? Um, it was. It was helping me out a lot. I may want to consider unlocking it once I get this on here. Um, my worry is that it could snarl. Yeah, I'm going to send it out here to keep it straight. And um, did you remove it from the third tether point? I did. Okay. Yeah, I have to to get over there, at least to be able to throw it to you. All right, stand by. I'm going to need to use hands probably. I can always uh, GCA again to get in there.
Hare and, and Marshburn now communicating back and forth, working on the best way to stow the degraded SASA to the Express Logistics Carrier 3. This degraded SASA was on the P-1 trust and it got moved here to the space station's Express Logistics Carrier. Uh, try to GCA in there. I can get it, Tom. I'm just going to need to put a BRT down, I think. Okay. Um, just because I need two hands in order to prevent the tether from moving, and I don't want to run into Logan antenna. It's just off to my side. Uh. Okay, and if you could turn the tether back toward me, please. The scarf is now tethered, and are you able to reach a tether point on your side? I am. Now, I'm not uh, the, the tether point that was in the picture. I can make absolutely sure that it's not another. If we could confirm there's only two tether points for the scarf. Mm. My vantage point, that one right in front of you, looks like it's on the shirt. I think it is, too. Its connection point, though, was uh, covered by an MLI flap. Let me go back over to the... Uh... Tom, Chef, what's here? Tom, we think that there are two tether points on the scarf. And just two. Okay. Then we have both the shirt and the scarf tethered at this point. Tom, if you could just stand by for one second. Got me. Um, We're working against you. Because of the way the tether is now routed, we're just going to have to slide the scarf off the end of the high gain antenna. The shirt and scarf you hear them referring to is basically a thermal blanket covering the bulk of the communication system and its skinnier neck. Get her some, uh... Thank you. You need to release the Velcro on your side, and then we'll just slide it off forward. And now we'll be clear. Okay. There we go. Clear, Tom? Not yet. There we go. All right. Is removed. Turn on the shirt. And um, I'm working a little too far away from the staff, so I'm going to ask another DCA if I can take the comm. Go ahead. Yeah, Matthias Roger. I uh, need a DCA to get a little closer. Where do you want to go? All right, I want to go body up 10, 20 centimeters and pitch down about 30 degrees. Pitch forward 30 degrees. So body up 10 centimeters and then pitch for 30 degrees. Good copy. And here comes the body up motion. Be good motion. Oh, yeah, here comes uh, pitch forward. And stand by. Anyway. Uh, give me another 10 centimeters uh, body up. Another 10 centimeters body up. Good Start copy. motion. Be good motion. And stop motion. Stop motion. And then here comes the pitch, pitch forward. Don't need the pitch forward. This is good. So uh, hold off on the pitch forward and uh, end GCA. Stay complete. Brakes are on. All right. Pull the MLI away from you as you back out. Look, like you're all clear. Yep. 
I can uh, hold the MLI away here if you want to go get the large hook. Uh, just the MLI one, huh? Okay. I think there's still some Velcro attached on my side that I'd like to release. Copy. I can rip to it. Do you want me to hold it out of the way and you just move the large hook over? Yeah, that would work once you get it off. Okay. I'm ready to the whole thing, and I'm just going to gather it up, put it out of your way once you get that last MLI off. I understand how it's routed on this side so I can get it out to you. And I think that was the last little piece there. Looks like it. Yeah, I've got a good hand on it. Before we sock in your workspace, if you want to move that over, and I am ready to do it as well. One second to reconfigure things a bit over here. No worries. Looks like a faceful. I'm grateful we're not trying to put that back on. It's a lot of Velcro. <laughs> In very specific places. Barron and Marshburn had worked to temporarily store the failed SASA um, right at their current work site. They'll, they'll come back once they've installed the new unit to do a more temporary, to do a more permanent stow of the degraded SASA. They're working on their first task to retrieve the spare SASA. That will be removed and taken over to the P1 Trust. The first step of that is removing some of the thermal protection. Tom, I'm just going to take a second to put down my VRT. Sounds good. So yeah. I have two hands when I'm trying to pack. Yeah, get yourself all set. I'm going to. Once you're good and I let go of this, I'm going to. Let's see, ask for another TCA to get the launch bolts. I should be ready in just a few yeah, moments right. here. Andrew, could you confirm uh, once Kayla's stuff in the MLI, I can start setting up to release the launch bolts on my side? Yeah, Tom, we want you to get in a good arm position for that, and then we'll configure your PGT with the ERAD whenever you're ready. I'm working the large hook now, Tom. Okay. Marshburn just communicated with ground IV Drew Morgan that he's ready to configure his ERAD, or enhanced right angle drive. This is a tool that is used uh, because the bolts are not necessarily in an easy position to get to. Hook attached to the medium mill U-ride, you have a go to release your tether. Stay in work. He has two launch bolts that he'll be working to release. Okay, it is released. It's all coming over to you. Roger. And if I can take the comm for a moment, I'm going to DCA. Yep, you have a go to take the comm. Copy. And this is still locked out. And on the PSA, Roger. Ready for a DCA, body down. Copy, body down. Uh, do you want to go back to where you were? That's a good copy, and uh, hey, sir, I might really need body down 20 centimeters. All right, 20 centimeters body down. Starting motion. Good copy. Good motion. Can you stop motion? Copy motion. And GCA. GCA complete. Brakes are on. Copy. Going for my. You at? Copy, Tom, and understand that you're now in a good position. 
you can go ahead and configure your PGT. I'll give you settings when you're all set up. Okay, copy. I'm getting out my URAD right now. Ground IV, Drew Morgan getting ready to give Tom Marshburn some heads up on tool configuration, giving him the settings for his pistol grip tool to get ready to release two launch bolts. Um, I'm grateful we put the adjustable on the bottom of the bag. Definitely helping me out. And I'm just working on trying to get it all in here. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron worked slightly ahead of time when she was at the Express Logistics Carrier the first time. She did some of the tasks needed to retrieve the spare SASA. This is a task they're both working on right now, but she did some of the tasks ahead of time. My six inch wobble is on my two uh, ten to my right adjustable with a good full test. Copy. The S-band antenna subassembly, or SASA, went down last September with a failed return link. This means that Mission Control was able to send data up to the space station, but the antenna lost its ability to send signals back to Earth through NASA's tracking and data relay satellite system. Because the space station has so many built-in redundancies, we are still able to communicate with the International Space Station from the ground, even without the SASA. The station also has high-rate KU band uplink and downlink capability that relays video. And the station has other low-rate S-band systems as well. This is the first spacewalk to replace a SASA since Joe Tanner and Heidi Stefanovshin Piper replaced a SASA on the S-1 truss during the STS-115 mission on September 16th. 2006. And you rise on my PGT with a good full test. Copy, Tom. We're going to configure your PGT to Bravo 4 counterclockwise, too. As Tom Marshburn gets his tool set up, you can see views of the Earth peeking through the the right side of your screen. The International Space Station just is crossing over the ocean at the moment, right off the coast of Brazil. And I've got the shirt and scarf sewed in the medium ORU bag. That uh, adjustable across the bottom was a game changer, so excellent suggestion, Tom. Awesome. Very nice work, Kayla. I know how tough this can be sometimes. And at the end of the day, we are going to be able to bundle crew lock bag and the medium ORU bag if you prefer. So just keep that in mind in, in the event that when you go back to Risto, the mutt ball stack is there. But it looks like you're going to have plenty of room. Yeah, 
looking pretty good. I would say it's taken up about the bottom half of the bag. Andrew, say again, uh, settings, I'm in Bravo. Bravo 4, counterclockwise 2. Bravo 4, counterclockwise 2, verified. Okay, those are good settings. You're going to work the forward and the aft bolts. If you're counting at the PGT, we're expecting 11 to 19 turns. 11 to 19 turns at the PGT. Good readback. And just let us know what bolt you're working first. I'm working the Nader bolt on my side, on the other uh, side. Copy that. Starting. All right. NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn now working to release two launch bolts. This was an activity he was originally going to do with Kayla Barron. However, she was able to get the launch bolts off earlier in the spacewalk. She's getting ready to work on some mast bolts. Removing these mass bolts will release the spare SASA. And this is until uh, it pops out, correct? I don't expect uh, the torque. Yep, but we're going to pop out. We expect it to spring out. Kayla's all took a little more than 20 turns. Okay. It's not springy, but it did come up. So I'm going to put in some more turns. And I've Sounds been good. working on getting in a good position for the um, fast bolt. I've got Bravo 2, uh, counterclockwise 2 this. I'll stand by for go to drive those. Those are good settings, Kayla. It's advantageous that Kayla Barron got to work on releasing her launch bolts ahead of time. As it turns out, it took one more turn than expected on the pistol grip tool. The ground IV Drew Morgan was able to communicate that with Tom Marsh Marshburn, who's working on his now. Cool. And copy, copy five and a half to nine turns. And Drew, the uh, bolt on the Zenith side is out in uh, spring, and it was 24 turns. Torque was uh, eight, maximum torque. Marshburn is now halfway done releasing the launch bolts of the spare SASA. I'll be working the second one. It'll be the Zenith one on the Zenith side. Copy that. The forward zenith mass bolt is released, and that was nine turns. Copy nine turns on the zenith. Baron confirming that she is halfway done undoing the two mast bolts that she has, while Tom Marshburn has released one of the two launch bolts that he's working on. Kayla, can I just go ahead and get a glove and half and a safer check from you? Um, I can tell you now my half is dry. I'm going to wait on gloves and safer until after the bolt because I'm already in a good position with my hands full. That works. And, uh, all right. Andrew, that was 24 turns. 
popped out. And 10 was the highest work there. Okay, copy that, Tom. And so now you can stow the ERAD, reconfigure your PGT, just give us those pool tests. Copy. And then ultimately you'll put that PGT away and then we'll go through your checklist before we have you get in position to grasp the spare SASA. Copy. Tom Marshburn confirming that he has finished releasing the two launch bolts that he was working on on the spare SASA. He got direction from his ground IV, Drew Morgan, who gave him the direction to configure his tools and ultimately stow them away. With these steps complete, we're almost ready to remove the spare SASA and move it over to the P1 truss. Go ahead. Looks like on the plate that the RFG is mounted to, on the opposite side of the RFG, um, there's an MLI, a piece of MLI. Is that supposed to be there or was that supposed to be removed? Kayla, that's expected to be there. It doesn't need to be removed. Okay. Confirming. Um, one area of the Velcro got removed. I pulled it off inadvertently. I think it was part of the other MLI, but it's reinstalled. Nope, but good check. Drew, I can report a good glove check, no delta, and a good safer handle check, both sides. All right, perfect. Thanks for checking. Your ad is back on the Saka Caddy with a good pull test. Copy that, Tom. And the six inches back on the PGP with a good pull test. Okay, copy, Tom. We'll get that socket caddy stowed and the PGT stowed, and then we'll go through your uh, pre SASA grasp checklist. Nothing. I need to clean up my crew lock bag just a second for the trip home. Back.
right. All right, looks like you got everything put away okay, there, Tom. Good position. I say firm. Okay, well, first and thing we're going to... We'll need, a, we'll need another GCA to get uh, firmly onto the RFG. Yes, Tom, I think we'll have you go ahead with that little GCA, and then we'll go through your checklist. Okay, copy that. Um, I want to be able to help lift up. So, uh, Matthias Raja, I'll take his body up in centimeters, 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters, body up. Good copy. Right, you're off. Starting motion, body up. Motion. You can stop motion. Motion stops. You ready for brakes? And body left uh, 20 centimeters. You left 20 centimeters. Copy. There's motion. Good motion. Wrapping out. All right, stop motion. Okay, motion stops. Okay, and GCA. Okay, complete. Brakes are on. Are the 40 get maximum uh, leverage? For those of you just tuning in, we're just about two and a half hours into the spacewalk with NASA astronauts Tom Marsh Marshburn and Kayla Barron. Hold in close to you. Adjust your visor as you need to. Sunset will be coming. It's Kayla Barron's first spacewalk of her career, and the duo is working to replace a faulty S-band antenna subassembly, or SASA, with a spare already aboard the station. Copy that. Clear. Others are clear. And then if you just, uh, if your heaters are set and your cooling is good, then you can go ahead and ret to the, uh, to the handrail there. Complete. 5.15 a.m. Central Time, 6.15 a.m. Eastern is the official start time of this spacewalk, marking the beginning of the 245th spacewalk in support of space station assembly and maintenance. I'm still in Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2. Good settings. Five and a half to nine turns to release. I'm up here a little bit further. The SASA went down last September with a failed return link, meaning that Mission Control can send data up, but the antenna lost its ability to send signals back to Earth through NASA's Tracking and Data Relay Satellite System, or TDRS. Fortunately, due to some redundancies on the station, we're still able to communicate with the International Space Station on the ground, even without the SASA. Uh, out at this setting. Copy checking. We found out about this faulty system back in mid-September, and it was actually really advantageous for us because it meant Kayla Barron and Tom Mershburn hadn't launched to the space station yet. They had time to train in NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory here and NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. It's a large pool that astronauts use to train for their spacewalks on the ground. Current setting is uh, Bravo 7. Negative Bravo 2. Bravo 2, okay. All right, Taylor, we're going to reset your PGT uh, to Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. Roger. Change my body position a little bit to support the higher torque. Kayla, our apologies. We are going to attempt one more time at Bravo 2. I apologize for that. And we want to make sure that your hand location there, that you're hanging onto a SRAM handrail and clear the NZGLs. Uh, I was not hanging onto any handrail. I got my BRT down and I had my left hand on my BRT while driving. Okay, copy. That sounds like a good configuration. And we'll do Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2, and we have a handover in about a minute. Uh, 
turns. And it torqued out, but it also slid off the bolt head, so I'll try again. I come down and just make an adjustment here, Tom. Okay. Okay, Kayla. Okay, and then to help pull that and on. Go ahead, Drew. Hey, Kayla, now we are going to reset to Bravo 7 counterclockwise, too, and we're going to try one turn only, yep. and we have a handover in less than a minute. Roger. I'm in Bravo 7 counterclockwise, too, and understand one turn only at the setting. Good read back. We'll catch you on the other side. DRT. Okay. I can hold your PGT if you want. That's all right. Just want to make sure I'm in a good position for the higher torque. Okay. The spacewalkers here so far are an, about an hour ahead of schedule. So far they've completed tasks like getting the degraded SASA, removing it from the P1 truss and moving it over to the express logistics carrier number three. They've temporarily stowed it using a rigid tether that Taylor, Kayla Barron had installed earlier during the spacewalk. They're both now back at the express logistics carrier three to remove the spare SASA. And also not touch the... Uh... FG at all. Okay, guys, we're back with you after the handover. How'd we do? It looks like about one turn to me. What do you think, Tom? I yeah. saw some movement there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, there we uh, go. Torque is broken. Definitely broken, yep. Still had to reposition, but it uh, looks like we got a good turn on it. Okay, Kayla, we're back with you, and we're going to reset now to Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2 is set. Fortunately, when the SASA went down back in September, a spare was already aboard the International Space Station on the Express Logistics Carrier. A new part did not have to be launched to them. Ten turns. And it popped out around Look at that. It's out of the soft back as well. Out of the soft we see it. That was Alliance good. In. It's out. Good job. Thank you. And if you want, I can check your safer handles. I can just take a look. Um, I did feel them a Before couple minutes part. ago, but I'll just check out take a look if you can see them. I, uh... If you grab something for your head down a little bit, I'll probably be able to see them. Uh, but if you're confident you got them, then. Or maybe just uh, roll one way. Okay, your left is down. If you roll to your left. I'll pick up my BRT here, Tom, and then I'll have more freedom yeah, of movement. Just to get a good look over. And then I'll be ready for the maneuver. I'm going to press your PGT a little closer to you so it doesn't hang on anything. And well, let's take my hand over down. Look good. And Tom and Kayla, we have one check for you on the RFP box. Departing, then... If you would, uh, Kayla, if you're able to see the RFG box and just check the NZGLs on the what was on Kayla's left side of the NZGL. Uh, the N the RFG box, the NCGL is located there. If they look like they're mated or still. They are, they are mated full forward over center. And on my side, I see the same. All right, those are good checks. And Drew, if uh, that's next on the checklist, I'm ready for the maneuver. 
your go for the maneuver. We, uh, you on the comm, and for Kayla, we're going to have meet you back at the install location. Roger, heading that way now. Hey, uh, Matthias, Rezar, ready for the maneuver. Sounds good, Tom. We're going to undo what we did here uh, with some of the GCA first. Uh, so we're going to take you right down and then aft, and then we'll set up for the manual back off maneuver. So taking you 20 centimeters body right first. Okay, copy. Sorry, I'm going to take your body out first, aft. Body out. Spacewalking astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn have just finished retrieving the spare SASA from the Express Logistics carrier. Baron will now make her way back to the P1 SASA work site. Okay, and then uh, 20 centimeters body down. That's okay. clear of all structure. Okay, all right, we're going to set up, uh, we're going to change it back to the ISAX frame, and then we'll get the next maneuver going. Copy. Ready for the maneuver. NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn will be the one that will take the spare SASA over to the P-1 truss. Fortunately, he's got a ride with him. He's going to be taking the robotic arm under the direction of NASA astronaut Matthias Maurer and his backup Rajatari. Over the next few steps, they're going to install the spare SASA onto the P-1. This is the same location where they took away the degraded SASA, and now they're putting a spare in its place. Everything from here on out will pretty much be the steps of removing the degraded SASAB in reverse. This involves NASA astronaut Kayla Barron mating some cables. About three meters of zenith motion. Copy. Motion. She'll have three cables to attach to the spare, one that does data, one connecting heater power, and the other connecting operational power. And that's the zenith edge of the truss right now. Copy. Okay. go. On your screen now are live views of Tom Marshburn moving on the robotic arm of the International Space Station carrying the spare SASA. Wrapping out. As Kayla Barron moves to the P-1 work site and Tom Marshburn hitches a ride over there on the robotic arm, the International Space Station is flying over Kazakhstan. Yeah, Kayla, back to Hey, Tom, here comes the joke ass about seven minutes long. It's going to take you back, mostly starboard, back to a place you've been before. Ready.
As the astronauts make their way over to the work site, we can take some questions. We solicited some questions on our Instagram, at NASA Johnson, and we can go through a couple of those. The first one comes from Adam, who asks, what truss is the antenna on? Well, the truss is going to be installed on the P1 truss. This is where the degraded unit is and where the spare is going to be installed shortly. The spare was kept on the Express Logistics Carrier 3, which is located on the P3 truss of the International Space Station. Another Instagram user asks, does one feel the cold from the outside and the heat from the sun? This is referring to when we're in an orbital nighttime and daytime. There's fluctuations in temperature. Um, it's true that they can feel the difference and they take precautions like lowering and rising their visor, as you may have heard ground IV Drew Morgan talking about or advising them to do. They also have mechanisms built into their spacesuits. They wear garments underneath to help with temperature regulation, and the, sp the suits themselves are designed to keep the astronauts at a stable temperature. How are you doing, Tom? Doing good. Another Instagram user asks, what is on your pre-spacewalk playlist? And while unfortunately our spacewalkers Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron haven't clued us into what they were listening to beforehand, we do know that on their launch day, they listen to bands such as Guns N' Roses, Eminem, Nicki Minaj, Imagine Dragons, and so forth. We've got another question from Instagram user Fiona Daly, who wants to know how long is the spacewalk? Well, the spacewalk is planned for six and a half hours. However, the astronauts are speeding through their tasks. They're accomplishing everything in great time. Another user asked, how much time does it take to prepare for a spacewalk? We talked about the advantage that Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron had to find out that the degraded unit had happened before they left the ground so they could train into the neutral buoyancy laboratory. And I got my a pretty good effect. Um, However, the crew did get to prep while in orbit. All five astronauts of the USOS side, Marshburn, Barron, Vandeheij, Chari, and Maurer, have been studying the steps of the spacewalk, along with the tool configurations and any precautions they should be aware of uh, for the past week. Baron and Marshburn specifically, our spacewalkers today, prepared the equipment lock in the days leading up to today's spacewalk, doing tasks like getting their checklists and drinking water ready and inspecting each of their tools. This is all port, part of some preparations they did before the spacewalk. It also included some onboard verification fit checks where they tried on their spacesuits and made sure that they're comfortable and easy to move around. Hey guys, just wanted to check back in with you. We're a, less than a minute away from a handover. Happy Drew. Thanks. Roger.
One Instagram user wants to know how the space block was packed just on Earth. We briefly mentioned the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Inside this giant pool is a giant mock-up of the International Space Station. To scale, the astronauts have a chance to go fully suited underwater in an environment that simulates the environment of space. During this handover period, we've got another question from Astro Yesha, who wants to know what the rest of the crew is doing during the EVA. That's a great question. We've got Matthias Maurer from the European Space Agency. He's inside the International Space Station controlling the robotic arm that Tom Marshburn has been taking to and from his work sites. Roger Tari is alongside him, kind of serving as his backup. And we're back with you after the handover. Hey, Drew. Yeah, I'm just off of Caleb's left shoulder and waiting for the next uh, GCA to publish. All right, Tom, we're ready for maneuver to GCA to publish P1 NASA install position. And I'm ready. So are you good? It's time off already. All right. Uh, start GCA. Happy. Let's load. We'll load the values and let you know before we start motion. You're basically going to go about two meters nadir. Just a little starboard, and then about two meters forward in that order. Okay, copy. We still got the column. Sorry, uh, early call. And here comes uh, two meters nadir motion. All right, seven GCA, the published. And with the night and the camera views, we can't really clear your head very well, so just kind of keep an eye on that, please. I have a good view of the E-1-10. And I do as well. In good motion. P-1 truss, where they will install the spare SASA. Here to go. All right, there may be a little bit of starboard motion here. Is that ready to go? Yeah, then about two meters uh, ISS forward starting motion. Good motion for him. See good motion. Eighty centimeters to go. Kayla, just let us know if uh, the ORU gets too close. You're good. You're clear. In order to stall, install the spare SASA at the P1 truss, there's a number of tasks that they'll have to do. Caleb Barron will work to mate the cables for data, heater power, heater power and operational power. Tom Marshburn will work to loosen the gimbals. If you recall earlier in EVA, he had installed these to keep the SASA in the locked position. It seems like we're close. Are we there, public? By loosening the gimbals, the satellite, the the SASA unit will have the ability to track satellites again. All right, there's the polished position. How's that look? Good to me. Yeah, me too. Good GPA. Did you see that you complete? Brakes are on and you are go for P1 SASA install. Roger. All right. Tom, um, we need to go um, a little bit away from the bracket. A little bit aft. A little bit aft. Okay. 
that light touch if you want to just move it. Okay, the, uh, if you could rocket uh, starboard. Rocket starboard. Now push straight down. Baron and Marshburn now working together to get into the right position to install the spare SASA. This activity total is supposed to take about 45 minutes. Ready to get in position to drive the bolt. All right, I felt it pop in there. Yep, it looks great. It's flush, flush with the plate. Great. I'm getting a little light tug that is not moving, so it's all good. That looks fantastic, guys, and we'll be ready to help you configure your PGT when you're ready, Caleb. I do. Two for settings. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Earlier during the spacewalk, Earlier during the spacewalk, Kayla Barron removed the stanchion bolt. That was the last stop to replacing the de to removing the degraded SASA unit. Now, one of her first tasks in installing the new one is driving the stanchion bolt again. She's getting her tool configured to do so now with ground IV Drew Morgan. A little bit of side load, but you're good now. Okay. It popped right back in again. Looks like. Thanks. Good now. Kayla, we're expecting 17 to 18 and a half turns, and we'll take your torque turn and light. Roger. Starting turn. Your PGT moving. There's a side load there a little bit. You're getting a live view now of NASA astronaut Caleb Barron driving the stanchion mount bolts. Meanwhile, off screen, Tom Marshburn is holding the SASA in place attached to the robotic arm. Work my way back down a little bit more. Looks like the PJ, PGT is going in. In 20 turns on your. It's working. Yeah, it's still driving. I think, um... There's a, as you torque, there seems to be an increased side load. Uh, the, um, body of the PGT interferes a bit, or the, um, mass itself interferes with the body of the PGT. Yeah. So it's kind of difficult to maintain a perfect position. Maybe I'll go to light touch and maybe me. On it. So there, I'm feeling the some side load there. You see, still turning though. I'll push against. See if I can relieve that counteractive side load. As NASA astronaut Kayla Barron works to drive those bolts, the International Space Station is flying over the South China Sea, headed towards the Philippines, and we are about three hours into our spacewalk. So I think I'm sensing there's a little bit of play in the um, off -off position. Okay. And what I'm wondering is, I think, let me get, it came off, actually, the soft dock. Um, uh -huh. what, I, what I'm thinking is maybe the bolt wasn't actually engaged in the threads, obviously, or else it wouldn't have done that. Um, can you push straight nader? And push a little bit port. A little bit port. Yep. Um, 
And back a little bit, server, please. I'll push uh, straight later uh, into the plate. And if you can try to hold it right there. All right. I will I'll, try I'll again. Counteract any side load. And that was 17 turns. Yeah, I'm going to keep a light touch and pull on a little bit. Um, can I finish my call real quick? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, 17 turns, green light, 26 foot pounds. In that time, I was actually able to see the bolts drop in depth. So I, I believe it's fully engaged, Tom. Okay, great. But you're welcome to give it a little wiggle to confirm for yourself. Sorry to on your call. Okay. And we copy all, Kayla, and that sounds like a good install. Good install. Yeah. I concur. She looks good. Okay, I'm great work. My rep. Great work. Yes, Tom, you can remove your RET, and Kayla, we're going to have you start to work the cables. Roger. NASA astronaut Drew Morgan serving as our ground IV today just gave the go for Kayla Barron to start working on the cables at the spare SASA. Are clear, and then you can work with Raja and Matthias to move to the spare gimbal lock back off position. All right, that's true. When she was removing the degraded unit. Out of the way, I've got good clearance all around. Ready for the maneuver. Copy, nice job wagging that thing down, and copy your go for maneuver to spare gimbal lock off, back off position. Give us a second to set up, and we'll get you moving. Some kind words from Rajachari there. Yeah. When removing the degraded SASA unit, Kayla Barron had disconnected three cables to free the degraded SASA in preparation to move it to the express logistics carrier. And now that the spare is in its place, she'll work to reconnect these three cables, powering data, heater power, and operational power to the spare SASA. Hi, Tom. Uh, this next position is going to look very familiar. You're going to take your aft, just a little port, and then zenith. And gotcha. starting with two meters aft. Starting motion. Good motion. For those just tuning in, we're talking about the SASA, or the S-band antenna sub-assembly. This is used to transmit low-rate voice and data between the space station and the team here on the ground in mission control using S-band radio frequencies. It went down mid-September with a failed return link, meaning we can send data up, but the, the degraded antenna lost its ability to send signals back to us. NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn are on a spacewalk outside of the International Space Station now and are working to install the spare unit. Uh, about uh, two meters in, starting motion. motion. Out. He's setting up for another Joe Cass. That's uh, be about four and a half minutes long. Okay. 
Complete. Is complete. Is complete. And we'll let you know before we start hit start on the joke ask. Uh, Drew. We're with you. I have a uh, four in my hand and I'm ready to mate to J4. The lever is full aft over center with this in, no fod, good EMI band. Go to mate. Me. And Kayla, you can continue with P3 and P2 after that, and we'll catch your checks after the GCAs. What you see now on your screen are the connectors that Kayla Barron is working to get connected to the spare SASA. While Kayla Barron is working on those three cables, off screen we have Tom Marshburn in the robotic arm. His tasks are to loosen the gimbal locks so that later on in the procedures when the spare SASA is powered up, it will be able to move and track satellites. Right now the current gimbal locks are keeping it rigid and in place so that no unexpected movements happen and we keep our spacewalkers safe. two-thirds of the way through. Okay. And Drew, all three NCGLs are mated, full forward over center. All had good pins, no five, good EMI bands prior to me. Copy, Kayla. Great work. We are done with those three connectors. Those are good checks. The next thing we're going to have you do is we want you to move your green hook outboard two handrails to 3624, 3624 in preparation for get ahead. Roger, move green hook to 3624. Kayla Barron communicating with the ground that she has finished mating the cables to the spare SASA, meaning that the unit now is receiving power and data. Ground IV Drew Morgan already has his sights on some get ahead tasks as he's getting Kayla Barron in position four. We're three hours into the spacewalk, scheduled to take about six and a half hours, but we're already moving well ahead of schedule. Out. There's position hold. We'll be setting up for a manual move next. Copy. We're looking at uh, over the meter.
I'm ready for the GCA to publish whenever you want. I just love the values. We're, uh, Tom, we're ready for maneuver to GCA to publish spare gimbal lock position. Okay, hey, ready for the GCA to publish. Start GCA. Uh, station starboard, uh, one meter. Copy, uh, and do you want to take you to the published or just? Hey, sir. Uh, so it's going to be about a meter starboard and then a meter and a half aft starting the starboard motion first. Oh, sounds good. Got my green hook up. I'm moving over to 3624. And I'll head out to meet you, Tom. Copy. Okay, motion, Roger. One meter to go. Stop motion. Okay, stop for motion. That's about uh, 40 centimeters, about half a meter short of the published for starboard. Okay, looks good for right now. All right, we'll give you uh, about a meter and a half aft then. Sounds good. Good clearance. See one meter to go. Did you? Did you? Yes. Did you? Twenty centimeters. In stop motion. The International Space Station is flying through an orbital nighttime, so the views are a little dark, but you can see the Canadarm2 with NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn attached. Uh, you're a little closer than uh, we're supposed to just make sure you've watched the uh, clearance as we slide to starboard. Okay, good clearance. He's in communication with NASA astronaut Raj Achari. Right now he's working to loosen the gimbals to allow the SASA antenna to track satellites and allow for communication between the ground and the space station. Okay, 20 centimeters. Sorry, 20 centimeters, unit's coming. Copy, you see good motion and stop motion. Just... All right, then GCA. Okay, GCA complete. Put on and brakes around. Okay, Drew, ready for a PGT setting? Gimbal bolt. Move. Okay, we were with you, Tom. So one caution to read you, as you recall, that we don't want to exceed turn counts on these bolts because that can cause damage to the bolt. And we're going to have two sets of PGT settings on this. The first round will be Bravo 4 counterclockwise 2. Bravo 4 counterclockwise 2 confirmed. Verified. Okay, this is going to be a single turn, and we're going to do this in order, four, three, two, then one. So we're starting with four. Towards your boots on the right side. Boots right side, number four, in work. One turn only. You just heard Ground IV configure the tools for NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. Give him the correct settings to loosen the bolts on the gimbal locks. There's four of these. Uh, Marshburn will be starting on the right side with number four and work his way down. Once the spare SASA is installed and configured, as Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron are working to do now, the EVA does not stop there. That's a good read back. After the install, they will head back to the Express Logistics Carrier 3 and permanently install the degraded SASA. If you recall earlier in the EVA, they brought it over there and temporarily stowed it. That after they've installed the spare, they're going to work their way back there and get a more permanent configuration. Working out at four. The torque I'm reading. Check my settings. 
Not getting turns on the bolt. That's Bravo four counter two and it's torquing out. And copy Tom and one we just wanted to confirm what bolt you were on, if you could use the uh head foot right left coordinate to tell us which bolt you just worked yeah. there. The right right foot bolt. for the right foot, number four in my memory. That's the correct bolt. We're just checking on the settings here. And guys, the sun will be coming up here in just a couple minutes. Copy. And Tom, we're still checking for you. Copy. Okay, Tom, we're going to move now to bolt number three. That's boot side le to your left. Boot left, copy. And this will be the same thing, one turn only. One turn only. Verified, bravo, or counterclockwise two. Good setting. Bolt three. NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn confirming that he's completed work on the first bolt and is moving on to the second one. Meanwhile, the crew got a heads up that the International Space Station will be moving to an orbital daytime. It's currently in the South Pacific Ocean getting ready to fly over New Zealand. All right, Tom, that's good news. We're going to move on to bolt number two, and that is on bolt number two. left side toward your helmet. Marshburn now is on bolt number two. Remember, Marshburn started with four and is working his way down to one. Good reading. One turn on bolt two. Copy. And we're going to go on to bolt one. Helmet, right side. One, helmet, right side. Because our spacewalkers today are making such good time accomplishing their tasks well ahead of schedule, the crew here is thinking about getting started on some get ahead tasks. One of the get ahead tasks is looking at a bolt. Um, I was on the airlock, it was showing some minor wear and tear, and installing a new one was actually one of the get ahead tasks from Toma Piske and Aki Hoshide back in September during their spacewalk. Watch it out for that. This is unrelated to the SASA. But since the crew will be working around the airlock as they ingress and egress, one of the get-ahead tasks are to go ahead and take photos of the pit pin that Toma Piske and Aki Hoshide had installed. Yeah, it's not rolling either. Okay, Tom, what we're going to do is stay with the original settings at Bravo 4 and then go back to bolt number four, right side toward your boots, and we're going to try to do that single turn again. Okay. Verifying Bravo four. 
and going back to bolt four on the right boot. That's a good read back. I turn, one turn on four. All right, that's great, Tom. Let's go to bolt one, do the same thing. That's right side towards your helmet. Right side towards your helmet, same thing. It works. And brake torque on that. We try it again on that. I like it did, but actually it didn't see any socket. We're going to do it again. Yeah, the socket's not turning on it. on the septum a little bit, see if I can get any motion again. And one more time. We're following along, Tom. Let us know what you get there. We are going into a period here where we may have a little bit of radicon. con. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Copy. So it's breaking this, it's breaking the torch. One is not moving yet. All right, Tom, we copy. We're checking. We may go to a different PGT setting. Standby. Copy. So, Tom, an additional suggestion at the original setting, Bravo 4 still, we're going to ask you to put a little bit of movement into the high gain antenna, see if you can jiggle while attempting that one turn, if you're able. Okay. And work. Voiding that uh, table. I'm not getting motion over the septum and still torquing out. Try it one more time. While well, Marshburn works on loosening those bolts, communicating with the ground. Okay, Tom. Uh, we are at this point going to go to PGT setting a Bravo 7, still counterclockwise 2. So this is a high torque. We think that this might break off the bolt, so just be ready to catch that if you're able. Copy. Bravo 7. One and turn only. Turn the clockwise 2. Turn and only on bolt 1. Single turn bolt 1. Single turn bolt 1. Copy. He's working with the ground to configure his pistol grip tool to different settings, another way of loosening the gimbal bolt locks. Okay, three quarter turn there. A little bit more. And we got a one turn on one. Great news. All right, we're going to go to our next set of PGT settings when you're ready. Ready? Alpha 2, counterclockwise 2. Alpha 2, counter 2. Another end of the spectrum. Two, or clockwise two, starting with bolt four. Once again, loosening these gimbals allows the SASA antenna to track satellites and allow for communication between the ground and the space station. This is complementary to the work that Kayla Barron did, attaching the ISS cables for operational power and data. Boots on the right side. That's complete. It's easy for bolt four. Two turns added. Copy, bolt three, boot side, left. Boot left, good work. Running easily. Two more turns for bolt three. Going to bolt two. Good news, left side towards your helmet. Left helmet. Easy. 
Is he turned? Turns. Now over to bolt one. We're ready for bolt one. Right side helmet. In good motion, easy motion. Turns. Bolts are obviously free. They're just not easily coming away from their uh, position. I'm going to throw the PDT if that's the uh, right next move. Yeah, Tom, you can go ahead and, and stow your PGT and rotate those bolts back away from the septum to the unlocked position, and then just verify that the gimbal lock bolts are secure in that unlocked position. Now that the gimbal lock bolts, all four of them, have been loosened, it's now Tom Marshburn's task to rotate the gimbal lock bolts away f and into the unlocked position. Once complete, Marshburn will verify with the ground to communicate that they are secure in the unlocked position. Floor's not budging. It's loose in the slot, but not coming around the bend there. Even after jiggling the antenna, I'm working on three now. This task that Marshburn is working on is the last step before he gets the go to power up the Sasa. And Tom, I just wanted to check back with you. Are they all rotating back okay? Uh, one and four again are not. Two and three, after some jiggling, the rotation of the septum did go back. I'll make sure they're fully on the little. They're fully back in the position. So one and four, they'll move in the slot, but are not coming out. So. I think I need to jiggle the, uh, avoiding the cable. Jiggling that septum. Marshburn confirming now that while some of the bolts have been unlocked with ease, others need a little bit more coaxing. We're following Tom and we're still talking. just wanted to offer up, um, if we think Tom's going to be troubleshooting for a while, I could go work a few get-ahead tasks, um, and it's not far from here, so I should be able to move back up while he's go-casting over here. Uh, Caleb, uh, for you, oh, we appreciate the offer. We're, I don't think we're going to go to get-aheads just yet. We do want to have you inspect the RFG box of the degraded unit. Um, we we'll just give it a look over if you have the spare capacity to take a look. Uh, take a look and take some photos Absolutely. of it. That'll appreciate. And we're about two minutes from a handover. Hey, Drew, I'm not getting a lot of motion from the septum like we did on the ground unit. The uh, one and four seem to be. Well, they're, they're pretty loose when they're in the slot. They're just not riding over out of the slot, despite uh, some rolling and jiggling. I'm not actually seeing a lot of motion in the septum, so this new SASA. Okay, Tom, um, we appreciate the words. Right now, we understand that one and four are the problem bolts, and so what we thought we'd have you do is set your PGT to alpha 2 and put one additional turn on bolts 1 and 4. Alpha 2, one additional turn. It seems like 
That's the best next step from my perspective. So alpha two, down to verify, going for four. One turn only. One turn only. One more turn. Still wet in there. Try number one. One turn complete. Okay, number one came out. Four bolts. And Drew, come check. Yep, Sean, we're back with you after the handover. So we were standing by for how that went with those additional turns on one and four. Yeah, that was a trick. Uh, a little stuck, but one and four finally, actually, one would not move, so, excuse me, four would not move even after the extra turn. But then after the extra turn, number one did move, went back to four, and then it popped out as well. So all four bolts are in the stowed position. All right, that's exactly what we wanted to hear. We're in a brief but expected handover between satellites, getting a live view now of Mission Control Houston, where flight director and ground IV are communicating with Tom Marshburn, who is troubleshooting getting some gimbal locks loosened. Again, this allows free movement once the SASA is powered on, so that way it can communicate with satellites. Okay, Tom, and just double checking on. Yep, they're all I in just, those positions. Yep. Copy. Go ahead. So we wanted to also just give you a quick update that you guys are about an hour and 40 minutes ahead of the timeline. Our limited consumable is still Menox. It's seven and a half hours, so plenty of time. And uh, every, you guys are doing great. This is everything that we had hoped. This is perfect. Uh, Tom, you're going to be doing empty-handed flyback. Take us some pictures and video. And then Kayla will take any words that you have on your inspection so far. Roger, one second into the Joe cast, I'll give you those words. We'll get started. And, uh, thanks for Roger and Matthias. Ready for the maneuver. Sounds good, Tom. Uh, we're going to first have to take you 20 centimeters later and then uh, undo what we did before, and then we'll take you to a uh, temp stow back off position. And so, copy your uh, go for maneuver to the ELC-3 temp stow back off position. I'll let you know before motion starts. Copy. Uh, yes, I'd go for the maneuver. Here comes 20 centimeters later. You get motion. We just got confirmation that well ahead of schedule, our spacewalkers, NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn, have installed the spare SASA to the International Space Station's P-1 truss. This involved installing a stanchion bolt and connecting some wires that Barron had previously disconnected. This allowed power to the unit. And Tom Marshburn worked diligently to get the gimbal locks released. The fourth one gave him a little bit of trouble and required a little bit more coaxing. But at the end of the day, Tom Marshburn was able to get the job done. Starting motion. Begin motion. Here to go. Motion. And centimeters ramping out. Okay, next will take me about a meter uh, port. Happy meter port, take good motion. If 
Senators. Okay, wrapping out. Uh, motion's complete, so we're going to set up for a joke now. All right, NGCA. And Tom, we copied your go for SASA Power Up, so we're working that now. The motion is about uh, almost seven minutes long. Okay. And it's going to be mostly toward motion back to where you were before on the LC3. Copy. Andrew, when you're ready to copy, I've got words on the of the greatest SASA RFG. We're all listening. Um, so I have a good view of. Um, what would be the sort of nadir face and then the larger surface area face um, that faced outboard when it was installed. Right now I don't have a great view of the most uh, zenith face, but on the, um, the main area of the RFG that would face outboard when installed, um, there's um, discoloration on the 93 along the most crowd area. There is what appears to be a small pit at the center. The MMO district. Uh, and then on the or nadir face um, and the grid on the nadir part of the main um, plane. There are also um, evidence of MMOD strikes. And in some areas, it looks like Taylor Roach, stand by real quick. Okay. Taylor, we were going through a period of pretty ratty calm there, so we lost some of that. I'll stand by for one moment. Tom? Doing good. The first pass of the daytime. It's something else. Baron and Marshburn now preparing to power up the SASA. This is the spare that they took from the express logistics carrier over to the P1 trust to replace the degraded unit. Following its successful power up, they will head back to the ELC and stow the degraded unit. I'm sorry about cutting you off there. No problem at all. Um, I was just also mentioning that um, some of the spots that look like MMOD strikes um, it looks just like you know, sort of that silver metal underneath. And then other areas are more like a brownish orange color around the area of the hit. Um, I don't know if that is just some sort of oxidation or something or like the age of the hit. Um, but from my vantage point, I can probably see at least 10 small MOD strikes. I was able to get some, what I think will be uh, decent pictures of the faces I've described. Um, and I might be able to get eyes on the other face once we have it installed on the fram.
Copy all. Kayla, that was a great description. We may take you up on that offer to do further inspection once we get it installed. And we wanted to confirm with you the number. You were describing a number of MMOD strikes, and we just want to confirm that number again. Um, let me see. I would say I can see 11 from my perspective. But because of the um, like raised grid area, there might be some that I can't see on these spaces. And I'm only really um, counting what I can see on two of the um, spaces and not really the size but where the most. All right, copy that, Kayla. Good words. And um, we will come up with a plan if there's an additional inspection that we'll take once we move it over there to the frame. Taylor. Yes, sir. You could uh, take your right hand and stick it out to the right. I'll see your right a little bit. Here's out. Thank you. Got some good uh, shots of you um, over at the one site, Tom. Nice. I think they're good. We'll find out later. Ninety percent done with the move. Copy. Roger. You might have seen a camera peeking out from the bottom of the screen with direction from Tom Marshburn asking Kayla to take a peek. It looks like we just had a selfie in space. Before the quick photo, Kayla Barron was communicating with the ground, giving a visual inspection of the outside of the International Space Station. And we are ready for maneuver to GCA to publish to SASA transfer position. And I'm ready for GCA to publish. Are you good with comps? Yep. Right, uh, start GCA. Publish. GCA, it's to be about two and a half meters later. I'll let you know before the motion starts. Copy. Starting motion, Nader. Copy. Let's see a good motion. Mirrors. It's tough to tell on your screen, but on the right side, the robotic arm of the station is gently moving astronaut Tom Marshburn. Centimeters. And stop motion. Out. About 30 centimeters short. And uh, stand by one. Gail, I think we're in the. Let's see. Pretty good position here, Roger. I believe you agree, Kayla? Yeah, as long as you feel comfortable, you can control the staff as I release it. I can. All right. It's GCA. GCA completes. All right, let me get a red on it here. Standing by. Marshburn communicating with the robotic arm operators, Matthias Maurer and Raja Chari. Release my right now while the handrail is still near me. Okay. And I have control. All right. My right is removed. And Tom, I'm going to unlock the jaws and then I'll release them. Copy. And I have control. Roger, you have control. Jaws okay. are unlocked. Is released. I've got it. Got two hands on it now. Roger. And Matthias and Roger, I believe we have a GCA to publish coming up next. Hey, hurry up. We're just switching the uh, frames. So the ingress aid is clear. Tethers are clear. Well, that 
that's in work time. I'm going to work on getting into a better position to monitor the alignment pin. Copy. All right, Tom, uh, the command frame is switched to body frame, and we are ready for maneuver to GCA to publish assassin frame stow position. Copy, you ready for the G Flip Start GCA? And uh, body left, one meter. Copy, yep, that's what we've got for you. Marshburn and Barron now moving to the Express Logistics Carrier where they're working to soft dock the degraded SASA into the frame. Well, watch your uh, left arm a little bit there. Roger, give me one second. I'll move away a little bit. Is that a wrapping out? Yeah, that's the published position. How's that look? I'm going to need uh, Nader, but let me let uh, Kayla move down. And the crew lock bag will need to be moved as well. Am I? We're in the body frame if you want to give us reference to you, otherwise we can figure it out. Uh, that's right. All right. Um, body forward. Let's go uh, 40 centimeters. That'd be 40 centimeters body forward and confirm uh, you're good with Kayla's position. Copy and good with Kayla's position. If you, she's good with it. Yep. Okay, Great. and uh, just watch your boot plate. Copy. Eyes are on it. Thank you. Be good, motion. Play same here to go. Can you? Can you? There's. All right. Let us assess this. Okay, there's your 40 centimeters. Position hold. Um, Tom, you will need to go to your left. Yeah, I will. Um, now go towards the plate. The alignment pin is in. All right. It's yeah. kind of uh, hovering over the yeah. alignment. I think I'm in a good position uh, with your uh, direction, so in GCA. Copy, GCA is complete, and brakes are on. Copy, brakes on. All right, Kayla, ready okay. for your direction? Uh, pull it towards you a little bit. Okay, the alignment pin's in now. Okay. Now, if you can rotate it so my end comes down, there you go. It's nice and flush there. Didn't feel a good, satisfying pop. Oh. Uh, there's no soft dock, if I remember correctly here. It's just the oh, alignment right. pin, Tom. That's right. And um, I'm going to try to see if I can get these bolt pans started. All right, let me realize I kind of knocked it there. You could hold it as flush with the frame as possible. Yeah. I need to get more left to do that. The astronauts now are talking about the frame or the flight reusable attach mechanism. It's what these replacement parts are attached to, and it's how they were brought onto the space station in the first place. If you recall earlier in the EVA when they removed the degraded SASA, they temporarily stowed it back onto the express logistics carrier, but now they're doing a more permanent installation of the degraded unit. Uh, Matthias, Roger, I'd like to angle GCA or GCA to my left. Happy the brakes are off, and how far do you want to go? So let's go left 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters left, coming in. Got to clear. Be good motion. 10. And there's 20 centimeters. Okay. Let's see. Testing. Tom, the end on your right needs to go down. Yeah. There you go. All right. Let's see if that works in GCA. Copy. GCA complete. Brakes are on. All right, Tom, if you could hold. Um... Oh, boy. challenge here is to get these hands started. They're going to have to be pretty well aligned. Right. 
So right here is a really good position, I think. You and keep it stable if I remove my hand. Let me go manual another 20. Uh, Roger Matias, uh, another manual to my left 20, or GCA to my left 20 centimeters. Starting GCA, 20 centimeters, body left, the brakes are off, and starting motion. Okay, good clearance. Good motion. Okay, wrapping out. Ready to check that out. Assessing. Let's try this in GCA. Okay, GCA complete, and the brakes are on. Looks like it was turning. I'll try the other one first. Okay. Maybe I will put down my VRT Tom, and that would help us. Okay. The next move would be to move in the arm again so I'm more in like your position. You could do. I'm a Alright. Okay. I tell you what, let me get, I can get into a much better position here if I get some more motion. Give me one chance to Absolutely. try it. All the chances you need or want. Now the real challenge here. Difficult to tell if they're really over the. You can see the uh, witness from the prior assassin. They're lying just right for that a little where it's not oxidized. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Like a little outline there. Yeah. But you got some engagement there maybe, no? Pop it up. Could um try getting out the ratchet wrench. Let's see. We could ask if we could just try driving it with the PC. It's got some play in it, but it's not just coming all the way up. I'm going to lift it up, keep my hand on it. If you want to lift it up just a tad, see if it comes out. Oh, it's a. Uh, I think it's a. Retracting back out, so I don't think it's engaged. This other one, oh, I see. Yeah, the other one is. I thought I was holding it, but it did move a bit. All right. I can help you a lot more if we do a couple more maneuvers. Can you lift it up like a tiny bit and let's see if I can see the holes? Kayla, we wanted to give you the... Back in. Kayla, we wanted to give you the additional words that we yeah, can use a PGT at a low setting, like an Alpha 1 setting or like you suggested, the ratchet wrench, either two of those it, you get, would like to try or go with. Yeah, let's give that a try. Let's try the PGT first since they have it handy. Okay. That works. And then when you have a moment, Kayla, we'd like you to power your HECA off. It's getting a little warm. Okay. Let's go. Let's see. 
If you're just joining us, NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron are on a spacewalk to replace a faulty SASA unit. Right now they're stowing the degraded one. Earlier in the day they had worked to remove it from its original position on the P-1 truss, grab the spare from the express logistics carrier number three, and replace it in the degraded SASA's original position. They had temporarily stowed the degraded SASA, but now they're working to permanently fix it onto the spare part section of the International Space Station. Tom Marsburn is actually the oldest human being to conduct an EVA, and he is very proud of that record. This is his fifth spacewalk overall, the first three occurring back-to-back -back on his 15-day STS-127 mission back in 2009. The fourth spacewalk of his career, alongside NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, happened in 2013. I inadvertently turned it off. Tom, I'm thinking that it needs to rotate um, the left side toward you. It looks right. a little... Uh, my left side towards me? Correct. Yeah, that's better right there. All right. And... Uh, to be no joy there. Okay. Why don't, I, why don't I go for a, a better position for myself? I think it can help you out a lot more. Okay. All right. And uh, see if Raza, another uh, GCA. We're ready. Brakes are coming off. Where do you want to go? Okay. 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters body left. 20 more centimeters body left. Starting motion. Good motion. Centimeters. Wrap it out. Okay, body up. Taylor, if you can check over my head, I just can't see it. I think I'm good. Uh, stand by. All right. How far do you want to go up? I'm going to go up uh, 30 centimeters. Okay, copy. 30 centimeters body up, and Kayla's got your head clearance. Your head's clear. All right. Starting motion. I see good motion. That's great. And then how do you pitch forward? Twenty degrees. Drag it clearance. Okay, body pitch forward twenty degrees. Good copy. Any questions? Five degrees. Ready to go. Wrap me up. All right, then I'll take uh, body up another 20 centimeters. Happy body up 20 centimeters. Copy. Any motion? And there's your 20 centimeters. All right, stop motion in GCA. Copy, GCA complete, brakes are on. Copy. All right, try not to side load it, but now I can control it a little bit better. Um, it's not currently flush. Okay, working on that. Yeah. Need to get my hand on the inside here. The astronauts here are attaching the SASA to the FRAM, or the Flight Reusable Attach Mechanism. The astronauts using mast bolts to keep it secure. Left hand 
needs to go down towards the frame. Left hand. This particular frame allows the communications antenna to receive heater power. They'll also affix thermal blankets to preserve the antenna's integrity in case they ever want to use it in the future. Towards the frame, straight down. You push down on it. I've got to... How's that? We'll see here. Rotate a little bit. Um, do you think you can reach the bolt? Give like, it a whirl. If I were to hold it down? You can hold it down? Yeah. I might be able to do that. This one certainly. I think, um... I'm giving it a good quarter turn. Tom, we've got good clearance if you want to go body forward, if that would help. I'll take it. Um, could you put a hand back on it? Yeah. Hey, uh, Roger, stand by one. I'm going to put a hand back on there. The next thing we could do is, is this stable, maybe he's hitting it with the PGT again. Think. We're just not quite aligned here. Yeah, just slight. And let's uh, get the PGP out and push down on it. I can wiggle it until you, you feel it go in. So doing all that plus trying to turn it with your hands is just not. And uh, Roger, I'm going to take you up. Oh, wait, here. I might have gotten it. Oh, okay. Stand by. Roger. Oh okay. man, I think we're this close. Let me just. I'm in there. So guys, we've been following along, and so one of the suggestions that we had was maybe to try, like Tom described, is go ahead and engage the PGT on the bolt. Um, and if we need to take, uh, put Tom in a better GCA, I'm just in a slightly better position, and then Kayla has the PGT on, and then when we feel it in position, give it that one, uh, less than one turn with the, uh, at alpha one setting. Sounds good. So I'm going to do a quick GCA. And uh, Roger, GCA, body forward, 10 centimeters. Happy. Brakes are coming off and uh, giving you body forward, 10 centimeters. Starting motion. We just reached the four hour mark into the planned six and a half hour spacewalk with NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron. They are now working to stow the degraded SASA, this one that failed, or part of it went down back in September. They replaced it with another unit, and now they're just temp stowing the SASA onto the Fram. I'll see if I can rotate it a little bit. And Kayla, go ahead and go for two turns. They're discussing now the best way to get this done with their ground IV, Drew Morgan and the EVA team here in Mission Control. Um, that involves getting their PGT, their pistol grip tool. It's like a cordless drill in space configured and using astronauts Matthias Maurer and Raja Chari to get Tom Marshburn in a slightly more advantageous position on the robotic arm. as well. I think you're in on both. All right, good work, Ken. And Kayla, we're going to reset to Alpha 5 clockwise 2. Alpha 5 clockwise 2. 
as the astronauts got directions on their tool configuration from the ground IV, you are looking at a live view of helmet camera number 16 belonging to Kayla Barron. You are now seeing her point of view on the spacewalk today. Copy, Kayla, and your five and a half to nine turn. Okay. It'd be easier for me to hit this one, or do you have a good reach for it? That was about eight turns, and I think it torqued out. Do you agree, Tom? Are you yeah. trying to say it didn't? I'm just going to put it back on there for you if you want to do it again. I think it's torqued out, Tom. Okay. I got a green light. Eight turns, 4.7 pounds. Okay. Stand by, Kayla, we're checking. You wanna do that one, Tom? Roger. Yeah, how do you feel about your position, positioning? Well, I think you are probably in a better spot for it. Okay. We'll wait for the go, though. Right. Thank you. you guys, stand by on the uh, second bolt. Okay, standing by. Okay, on the bolt that we just drove, we're going to just double check settings, alpha 5, clockwise 2, and then we're going to attempt that bolt one more time. It's, we're expecting a little higher torque. Alpha 5, clockwise 2 are set. Yep, Kayla, we'll hit that one again. We're looking for somewhere on the order of about 7 foot-pounds. I got a green light, 7.3. All right, that's a good install. Baron now double checking on her work. She installed the first of the two mast bolts to connect the SASA to the FRAM with a flight releasable attach mechanism. Good settings, five and a half to nine turns. Thank you. Five and a half to nine. As Kayla Barron drives that second mast bolt to secure it, we'll sometimes get some earth views poking out of her, her wrist mirror. The International Space Station is about to cross the English Channel. 6.4 and seven turns. And I, I read 6.9 on the torch there. Okay, I might have missed that, thank you. All right, that's a good install as well. Oh, great. All right, Tom, uh, for you, we wanted you to assess where you are in your arm position if you needed to do any GCA um, before we start installing the tent, the MLI tent. And then we're gonna be standing by also for your go, whether we can move ahead with our comm swap, where we'll be swapping over to Space to Ground 3. That'll be seamless to you, but uh, I will do a comm check there with you guys, but we just want to hear that you're in a good position with the arm first. Okay. And I'm going to need to move around a bit. Uh, let's, let me just talk to Kayla for a second. So the shroud, I don't need to worry about this side so much. We're going to be putting in the water turn fasteners on this side and there. Yes. The folks here in Mission Control confirmed a good installation of the degraded SASE unit. And Matthias, Roger. Have you already, do you want us to uh, back out the, the uh, other inputs you put in or just go from here? I would start by doing some of that. That is uh, body back by 20 centimeters.
the particular area where the degraded unit has been successfully installed to does allow the communications antenna to receive heater power. Pretty soon, Tom Marshburn will work to reinstall the multi-layer insulation, the MLI, which is another layer of thermal protection for the unit. More if you want, that's the, that's the 20. So that's good. And I will need uh, heat down a half a meter. Good motion. And stop motion. That'll be stop motion. I think that'll do it. I can reach everything. Guys, I'm going to break in real quick. Kayla, we're going to have you stand by on the MLI tent for just a couple moments. Okay, NGCA. Okay, NGCA complete. Breaks are on. And just so you know, I'll, I'll little, need another one over to the right side. Get the other quarter turn past this. So, no, we're good for now. So Kayla, what we need is a, a thorough inspection of the low gain antenna side of the RFG, the part that you probably weren't able to see while it was in the Tempsto location. And if you can grab some photos for us, that'll be appreciated as well. And Tom, for you, if you are in a good position with the GCA and you're uh, content with where you're located there, what we want to do is hear your go for the comm swap. All right, let me just check with Matthias and Roger. Um, you guys good for the comm swap? We're good with that. Uh, you mentioned maybe needing a little more uh, GCA for that other quarter turn faster. Uh, so if you need that first, uh, we're happy to do it. Otherwise, yeah, we're, we're good. That will be the next step in the uh, shroud installation. I can only get one side of it from here. I can't get, can't get both sides with one position, so. Yeah, then we're fine with the comp swap. Okay. Yeah, Drew, uh, we're all good with comp swap at this point. So you have a go. Okay, Tom, we copy, and Raja and Matias know what to do if we lose comp for greater than five minutes. But otherwise, seamless to you, I'll check back with you once we're configured. You have live views now of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn aboard, aboard the robotic arm working to get that multi-layer insulation layer covered over the antenna.
getting live views now from NASA astronaut Kayla Barron's helmet camera on her very first spacewalk of her career as she puts the finishing touches on the stowage of the degraded SASE unit back onto the express logistics carrier. The Yuna is in good hands, attached to heat and getting its nice blanket on. Um, this It's a degraded unit for now, but in the event that it, they ever want to repair it and use it again, it is available for them to do so. A new unit to replace the spare did not have to be launched to the International Space Station for this operation, as it already lived right here where the degraded unit once was. We're in a brief but expected handover period right now. Meanwhile, aboard outside of the International Space Station, NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Caleb Barron are working to install the multi-layer insulation. This is a big thermal blanket going over the antenna for protection and thermal protection as well. Um, they're both on either side of the antenna working to get that fastened. These two spacewalking astronauts launched to the International Space Station as part of the Crew 3 mission just earlier this month and as you can see have already hit the ground running. Today they worked to install a new SASA unit that was already a part of the International Space Station, removing a degraded unit that had gone partially down just this past September. Because of other communications redundancies aboard the International Space Station, this spacewalk was not a huge rush when it went down in September. But now the International Space Station operations has time to do the spacewalk, and Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn have executed it ahead of schedule. Following these finishing touches, NASA astronaut Kayla Barron will work to return the bags of tools and other equipment they would need during the spacewalk that she had originally brought out of the Quest airlock and return them back. Meanwhile, Tom Marshburn will set to do the steps to, of the portable foot restraint in reverse and put them back on the CETA and break free from the robotic arm of the International Space Station and join Kayla Barron back in the Quest airlock.
You're looking now at a live view, this time from the helmet camera of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn as he gets that thermal protection covering hooked onto the communications antenna. During the installation of the spare SASA where the degraded unit once was, Kayla Barron had attached some wires that gave the unit power, and Tom Marshburn was able to switch the unit on. This all occurred before they went to go stow the degraded unit. We're now hearing that the unit is getting good forward and return communications on the SASA. That means that the new SASA is functioning as expected. Um, if you call, recall, the old one had a failed return link. It meant that we could send data up to the space station, but the antenna lost its ability to send signals back to Earth. Fortunately, we've got notification that this brand new SASA is getting information and communication both ways.
You're getting a live view now of NASA astronaut Kayla Barron's helmet camera. Her heck of use, these high definition cameras. We're watching this through her perspective as she puts the finishing touches, as she puts the thermal protection over the degraded SASA unit for future integrity. While this blanket that you're looking at may look thin, it's actually made up of several layers sewn together of bearing materials, including mylar, um, for the purpose of being able to withstand the swings from hot to colds that the space station experiences several times per day. So while we're getting information here on the ground that we're getting good forward and return communications on this newly installed SASE unit, the crew, our spacewalking crew today is going to do a check of the communications and we might hear Rajachari and Matthias Maurer confirm whether or not they hear it. In addition to these voice checks, the spacewalking astronauts are also going to check out their own equipment. They're going to do a hap check and glove inspection, as you've heard them do several times throughout the spacewalk. This is just one more step before they go back into the Quest airlock to conclude the EBA. And Houston Station on Space Ground 1, how do you hear? Station Houston, fish round one, read you loud and clear. Let's move to two. You're seeing the camera views of NASA astronaut Kayla Barron, and if you look at the top of your screen, you can briefly see some red stripes belonging to Tom Marshburn. Right now they're confirming with the ground that the thermal insulation is where it needs to be.
you what's going on because of my yeah on this side. The bee should in here. Oh, I see. Yeah, the, the there's Velcro inside the clamshell that should adhere to the tent, and from what I can tell, um, I not quite that. flat. Right. Like my end needs to come towards the station aft. This okay. needs to go down a little bit. You're now hearing the voice of Kayla Barron. I uh, went quiet for a little while because she had switched over from space to ground to another method of communication to test out the SASA, and we confirmed that those communications checks were good. That's uh, good, the good news that we have a working SASA antenna. antenna. Great job. That's fantastic. Awesome. Congratulations. That's great. Um, what, are you, what are you seeing, Tom? And then I'll so, fill in the gaps. So the clamshell is not completely closed, but it's... As Tom Marshburn and Caleb Barron put the finishing touches on the thermal insulation here in Mission Control Houston, we got a couple of cheers hearing the good news that the SASA is working, function, working and functioning fine. Uh, the clamshell's not mating with the Velcro. It needs to go aft further. So it needs to go aft, but rotation doesn't matter, right? Um, I don't think so. There's a tab on my side okay. that's about lined up. Um, so it, and the opening should be facing you exactly, facing Venus. Yeah. Um, so what I would recommend is opening it back up and releasing it, and then trying to get it further aft before we close it. The uh, top of the clamshell, though, is really flush hard against the um, top of the high gain. Okay, then sounds like a good config. I'll push the MLI now the, a little bit further up to meet it. The little turtleneck might have been in the way. So let me back that up a little bit. Yeah, that little turtleneck piece is... Uh, Lack of a better word. That's looking pretty good right there, Tom, if you close it. Okay. I think there was a little flap was uh, in the way. We're trying to close it now. Finger in there. Looking much better on my side in terms of alignment. There we time. go. That's a lot better on this side right now, too. Yep. I'm a lot happier with that. Looks good, Tom. Oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah, i got to get both straps in. Okay. There's one. Two. That holds it. Okay. Looks pretty good. I can hear. Controls and tethers. I'm all clear. How are you for me uh, taking off from here? Um, I'm go. Okay. Checking out your safety tether. Everything look good? Everything looks good on my end. And if you don't mind yawing just a little bit, double check your safety safer handles. That one looks good on your. If you yaw to your left. And uh, they can't quite see that one actually. I can see that one on your left hand. I just can't quite see your... It's down. I feel it. Okay. You can feel your right one. And uh, I think I'm good for the trip back. I can go. Great. And, uh, so, guys, just real quick, I just want to check in with you. The, uh... Ooh, check with you on a couple things. First, we, we want to get a glove and half check from you. And uh, we also wanted to give you the big picture that we're still about an hour or so ahead of timeline, and we think that we are going to have the opportunity to get some of, get to some of these get aheads. Roger. Copy. Glove check and work. Hi, Tom. Uh, and while you guys are doing the checks, we're ready to. 
get you set up for the next maneuver. We'll have to back you out of some of the GCAs you gave us first, if you're ready. Okay, uh, stand by just a little quick comment. I've got a dry half through, and the uh, small finger of my right hand has a couple of very small smudges on it, but otherwise the RTV looks really good. And for me, um, I still have some of those. They started out as kind of black, but now there's, they've rubbed off of it, the uh, dark smudges on my fingertips. And um, I've noticed on my very fingertips and kind of the fingernail side, there is some wrink, sort of like eraser wear-ish wrinkles, <laughs> um, kind of wrinkle ridges. I'm trying to show you guys that in my camera. I don't know if you want me to turn my HECA back on for you. Checking. Yeah, yeah Caleb. Okay I'll go ahead and we'll take your HECA back on. on. See if I'm good. Go ahead. Stand by, Tom. Back on. Okay, copy. We're swap swapping over to your HECA here. And Kayla, can you confirm that those wrinkles you're seeing are actually on the RTV? Yep, they're on the RTV. Copy. It's like on the, can you see my right hand, Andrew? If you could move your right hand to your left. Touch more. Tom, we're go on your gloves, and so you can go ahead and start working your GCA. You're now getting views through NASA astronaut Kayla Barron's cam helmet camera. She's providing a glove check as she's done periodically throughout the spacewalk. Go ahead. Okay. Matthias and Roger, ready for uh, GCAs to back out. Okay, so first we're going to undo the GCAs we gave you uh, sort of all at once, and then we will reset the command frame and get you to the back off position. So uh, we'll be starting GCA shortly. You're going to go body aft first. Body aft first. Copy that. Starting motion. Good motion. We're also pitching you... Uh, is the same time here. Copy. At the completion of Kayla Barron's glove check, where she reported the status of her gloves down to the ground after handling the SAS equipment, we've now switched to views of Tom Marshburn on the robotic arm. All right, wrapping up the body aft, and the pitch is done, and we're taking body left about uh, 70 centimeters. Copy, we have good clear. Follow the one. Sorry, right. Good motion. I see body down now. And wrap it out. We're just reconfiguring frames, and we'll let you know when we're ready for the next motion. Okay. 
All right, Kayla, we have, can have your heck of you back again, and it looks like you're complete with caps, and so we'll take that view of your glove. Sure, Mark. Checking. And we're handing over. All right, Tom, and uh, the command frame is switched to the ISAC's internal frame, and we are ready to maneuver you to the... We're in a brief but expected handover period between satellites. In the right corner of your screen, upper right corner, you see our flight director, Vincent Lacourt, and our ground IV, the one communicating with our spacewalking astronauts whose voice you might have heard throughout our coverage, earlier communicated to the spacewalkers that we may be able to do some get ahead since the crew completed their tasks ahead of schedule. We're going to continue with those gloves. We expect to get our live views back shortly. We know that Kayla Barron's helmet cam is on and is looking at her gloves for an inspection at the moment. Tom, how are you doing? Pretty good. Waiting for the uh, maneuver back. Gotcha. They're setting it up. Tom, for you, when you have a break in GCA comm, we'll take your bag inventory. Kathy, I'm just going to, I'll do that once they uh, start the maneuver. Copy, that works. You're not currently in GCA, correct, Tom? I'm not currently in GCA, that's a film. One of the get-ahead tasks is to break torque or loosen the bolts connecting the DC to DC converter unit for the battery charge and discharge units on the P4 truss of the space station. Motion here, and then we'll do a little bit of correction uh, uh, for as well. Here comes the motion. Okay. And good motion. Andrew, I'm working on the inventory. And I'm ready to give you a crew lock bag inventory as well. Then go. Ready to copy, Drew? We're ready to copy. All right, I've got a crew lock bag with an external. There you go. Large, small rep. Um, and then, of course, the integrated tether. Um, I have an adjustable to an internal D ring to a GoPro. I have a cap keeper to an internal rep to cap. On it, I have a large small ret with a small hook to an internal D-ring and an adjustable with a large hook to an internal D-ring. Everything on that side. And I for the other side. Stay out. Kayla Barron now completing one of the first tasks in her work site cleanup and taking, including taking inventory of a bag that she brought out there with her. Andrew, the remainder of my inventory, I have a um, internal ret to a socket caddy. In the socket caddy, I have an E-rad with a two-inch rigid socket and a six-inch wobble socket. I have a ratchet with a palm wheel on a small, small ret to an internal D-ring, and I have a long-duration tie-down tether with an integrated long wire tie um, connected to an in integral ret. Did 
checking. All right, Tom, are you ready for the joke ass? Ready for the joke ass. Question's about seven minutes long. Copy. The crew on the ground just confirmed that Kayla Barron brought back with her everything that she brought out. Another step in the work site cleanup. One of her first tasks of the day was to bring these two bags out of the Quest airlock and over to the express logistics carrier where they worked for a lot of this spacewalk. Stand by, we just wanted to confirm that you were in motion. And Tom, if it's okay with you, once you give me a go, I could finish my ORU bag inventory so I can work on getting things packed. Yeah, go ahead and finish that up. Okay. Kayla, you have a good bag inventory, and we just wanted to remind you that we need, do need the ratchet with the six inch for the get ahead. Yep, I concur. I was going to ask you if you agree. Um, with me putting the wobble socket on the ratchet and taking the ratchet on my mini workstation. Yep, that works for us. Okay, and for the medium or U bag, I've got a large small ret to the bag to an adjustable, which is tethered to the MLI. Um, and there's also an adjustable across the bottom of the bag. Externally, I have a large, small adjustable and a large, small rep. So, Kayla, we are going to need the ball stack and uh, in the bag. Oh, yep. <laughs> I agree. Good call, guys. Stand by. I'll retrieve that now. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Just interrupt me when you want. Okay. So, so you can keep on moving. Hey, Drew. Uh, if you're ready, I'm ready for an inventory of the crew at bag one. Ready. All right. I'm looking on the outside of it. It's got a small, small set for the external D ring and also a large, small adjustable on the other D-ring. Have a GoPro on an adjustable to an integral rent. Halfway through the motion. Happy. Long duration tie down further with the uh, wire tie, integral rent. Grinch, the foam wheel, a small rep, to an internal D-ring. Side bar to an integral rep. Race tether, an internal D-ring. And the socket caddy with the E-rad and the two-inch socket is on the Checking. And Tom, that's a good crew lock inventory. Kayla Barron had just completed the inventory of the bags that she had brought out her with, brought out with her for the spacewalk, and now we just got confirmation that Tom Marshburn did the same thing, and he has everything that he needs. These will be brought back to the Quest airlock, with the exception of the tools needed for some of the get-ahead tasks.
Can we table? If I have the mutt and I'm working on getting it stowed in the medium lower, you bet. My red swap now. That's a beautiful fastness, isn't there? Ready looking around. Got my visor down. Get in line. We are now in an orbital daytime as Kayla Barron was calling out that she has her RET and her MUT. This is the retractable tether and the multi use tether. Wrapping out. Your position hold. Uh, we're going to reconfigure here, and we'll uh, be setting up for a, a GCA to publish API bar egress. Give us a few seconds. Copy. And we're ready if you are, Tom. I'm ready. I could clear to ingress 8 is in. Hey, uh, Tommy, we're ready for maneuver at GCA to publish APFR egress and roll position. Ready to be about a meter and a half nader and then a meter and a half aft. Copy. Ready for the maneuver to GC. I'll be starting motion. to maneuver. Space workers, walkers, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron are now wrapping up their tasks for the day. Kayla Barron's cleaning up the work site while Tom Marshburn is working to stow away the robotic arm. One meter. And stop GC. Stop motion. Any motion? About uh, 40 centimeters short of the published. 40 centimeters short. Checking. I'll take the other 40. Copy. Continuing motion. Just watch your boot plate. Watch it. You're going to stop motion. Any motion? Okay. It's uh, 20 centimeters short. GCA. GCA complete. Brakes are on. Copy. And Drew, I believe I'm uh, ready for egress. Yeah, Tom, it looks like we are, you're in the egress position, and then you can stow your crew lock bag on the truss. Just let us know where you put it. Yes, sir. Andrew, I 
have an update for you on my bag inventory. We're standing by. Um, the mutt ball sack mutt is attached by a large small ret to a D-ring on the um, adjustable equipment tether um, that's tethered inside across the bottom of the bag. And my ratchet wrench with palm wheel um, has the six inch wall ball socket installed with a pivot pull test. That's on my mini workstation now. And if you agree, I will stow the crew lock bag in the medium ORU bag. That sounds like a good configuration, Kayla. We'll go for that. While Barron works to stow her bags that she brought out on the Quest airlock, Tom Marshburn got the go to ingress the robotic arm. He'll then work to remove the portable foot restraint and store it on the CETA, which lives on the outside of the space station. He will not need to bring it back into the Quest airlock with him. And Tom, you can go ahead and retract that ingress aid. Copy and work. Thank you. And Tom, I can help you build your tether pack back. Am I one? They drew the uh, crew light bag and stowed at 8,700. We'll see the Okay, copy. And then when you find your green hook, then we just want you to tether to that. And then you can attach that, that to your red reel. And it's going to be our key in place here. for the green hook. We'll run to it first. Okay, we're about two minutes from handover here, from uh, from a, a handover, and I just wanted to double check you're feeling good to work some of these get-aheads for us. Yes, sir, I'm feeling great. I've got the medium ORU bag tacked up and on my DRT, and I was going to head 
Bound to P44 Alpha. All right, that sounds good. And then if you could give us a safer handle check as you get down off of the ELC. Okay. We're in a brief but expected handover period. Kate LeBaron is talking with the ground now, um, reporting that she's all done with her tasks. And when the ground asked how she's feeling and if she's up to doing some of these get ahead tasks, she, she said she's willing and able. Looks like safer handles are down. And my got ones are down, Drew. Okay, copy all. We'll be handing over here in a minute or two. Drew, my green hook is going on to the red reel. And I'm blocking it. Copy that, Tom. That's a good check. And then you can release your yellow hook from the arm. Okay. Release my rat and this doesn't work. And then you'll attach it to your green rail and lock it in place. Copy. We're stepping into the handover. We expect to get our live views back shortly, and when we do, we can soon expect to see NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn free from the robotic arm for the first time in about four hours. We're now at the five-hour mark of the planned six-and-a-half-hour EVA. They've completed all of their tasks for today, and we've got a good communications check both on the ground and a verbal confirmation that the astronauts can communicate and hear them okay, meaning that the new SASE unit installed is functioning fine. There's, there's still LOS for another few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're back with you. Ready for a safety tether check for you? We're ready. On the left D-ring extender, I've got a red hook. It is closed and locked. The uh, yellow hook is closed and locked on the green reel, and the green hook is closed and locked on the red reel, and they're both stand by one. Second, they're both unlocked. And they're both unlocked. Not copy. All right, Tom, that's a good tether config. Copy. So you can remove the APFR from the arm, and you can stow it under your BRT or tend it on over there, and you can give the arm a go to maneuver to their parking position. Copy that. As Marshburn works with the ground to move his tethers into a good configuration to get off of the robotic arm, getting some views of the Earth during this orbital daytime as the International Space Station passes over the South Pacific Ocean.
And Kayla, we wanted to check in with you. We know you've got tough checklist pages that were probably guiding you over there to the 4A IEA, and we're going for the 4A3 BCDU, which is there in the aft corner on the non-radiator side, on the part of the IEA nearest to you. Um, I believe I'm looking at it right now. What I see is, let's see. CADDC, well, actually, yep, a battery charge, discharge unit ORU, serial number 0032. We're checking. And then, according to my tough checklist page, that through would be BCDU 4 Alpha 3. And I am on the aft starboard corner of the P4 4 Alpha IEA. All right, Kayla, you are on the right BCDU. We'll have you take your ratchet wrench. And then we're only going to do a half to a quarter turn on H1, and H1 is the non-doghouse side. Baron now working on her get-ahead tasks. You'll note that she only needs to slightly turn the bolts. This is because we're just generally loosening them for possible future use. Roger Matias, the APFR is removed. And by three sec. There's a half turn on H1. Okay, copy that, Kayla. And uh, one thing, I, a caution that I needed to give you is once we break torque on those, then we won't be able to translate on those micro squares. Roger. Problem? It's right, broken next. on each one. Copy that, Kayla. And now we're going to go to the PGT, and I'll give you settings when you're ready. Kayla Barron now breaking torque on the bolts to save time for future spacewalks if they, in the event that they ever needed a spare. Loosening these bolts, connecting the DC to DC converter unit to the battery charge and discharge units on the P4 truss of the space station. Airlines today, make sure to tip your pilots if you enjoyed the ride. Certainly did. First pilot. <laughs> Great words from Rajachari there, who assisted with the flying of the robotic arm containing passenger Tom Marshburn. I'm going to read you. Okay, I've got Alpha 7 counterclockwise 2 set, and I'm listening. Okay, those are good settings. First of all, we want to just make sure that you ensure that the socket's fully engaged before you turn the bolt to prevent bolt damage. And torque is broken when you feel motion on the bolt head. And to prevent bolt damage, we don't want to exceed a half a term on, on release. So I'm a little bit late in giving you that one, but I think we're still in a good place. And you got a little broken up there at the end, Drew. Um, I would say I've turned about a half turn with the ratchet wrench. And so, firm, you, you want me to drive this, the uh, PCT? Kayla, you have a good understanding. That's correct. And only one half turn. Is that 
Dispatcher. So, sorry, apologize for that, Kayla. So this one's on this H1 with the PGT, you're in the correct settings, Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2, and we're going to do seven turns on this H1. It's going to be a full release of this H1. While Kayla Barron gets to work loosening those bolts, we're getting a view of Tom Marshburn taking a look at the portable foot restraint in his hands. This was attached to the robotic arm that connected his feet for the majority of the EVA. Um, now is it pressable? Okay, copy uh, Tom, and if we could just confirm the settings. Actually ended up a little off from what I expected. It's at a setting of seven right now. Papa Papa and the Fox Six are the same. Each one is released, and I did um, get seven turns, and right at about seven turns, the PTT skipped a little. Tom, just for your awareness, we're going to be moving the arm here. It should be uh, behind you. Okay, copy, Kayla. And we're going to reset your PGT to Alpha 7 clockwise 2. And this will be for bolt 2. H2, correction. Verification. And Kayla, you're going to do this H2 bolt on the 4 Alpha 3 BCDU, and we'll just take your torque turns and light. And Tom, for you, we just want to confirm. And Tom, unfortunately, we would like to get the APFR in a 12 o'clock clocking, if able. Uh, 12 o'clock clocking. I'll use that. Okay. And then I'll uh, probably uh, roll it around, right? Because it's in a low profile position now, but I flip around the clock and then redo the pitch. Uh, not the pitch, but the uh, roll. And it'll be in a low profile, but I'll copy. And I'll go for the 12 o'clock position. I was looking at the uh, low profile situation rather than the number. And Drew, um, I've got you, Alpha 7 clockwise, Alpha 7 clockwise 2 set. Uh, H2 torqued out pretty much immediately at about half a turn, and green light, 9.1 foot-pounds. Okay, that is a good reinstall on H2. Kayla, next we're going to move down that same side of the IEA, the non-radiator side, and we're going to go to the 4-alpha-2 BCDU in the opposite corner. And can I just confirm, Drew, I never released H2 with the ratchet. Was that, that correct? Just want to make sure I'm tracking. Intent here. You are correct, Kayla. You, you understand it absolutely correctly. I will stow my PGT and head over to the other BDC? Yep, we'll meet you over there, and that will be Ratchet Wrench first. Roger, Ratchet Wrench first.
You're getting a live view now of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn as he puts the finishing touches on putting away his portable foot restraint. This connected him to the robotic arm conducted by Matthias Maurer and Rajachari. This means that cleanup of their work site is pretty much all complete. Now that Tom is out of his robotic arm, Kayla has stowed the bags and did an inventory on her tools. The crew is reporting that they're feeling quite well, and a couple of the get-ahead tasks are well underway. I'm looking at each one. And I am on the uh, BDCU that is on the most outboard aft corner of the IEA. Checking, Caleb. While we're talking about tools, we did get a question from YouTube, um, kind of calling out some of the pistol grip tools that the ground IV communicated with the crew. For instance, you might hear Alpha 5 CW2. Well, Alpha and Beta are different torque settings. Uh, Bravo is the more powerful of the two. B7 is the highest torque value. Okay, we're just checking a couple things here. The first thing, if you wouldn't mind moving your mini workstation end effector to a handrail rather than... The second number indicates speed being one through three, three being really fast. So for instance, if you call out Alpha 5 CW2, it means moderate torque value going in the direction clockwise with a speed of two, so perfectly in the middle between one and three. Okay, Kayla, you are go to brake torque on both H1 and H2, We're about a quarter to a half turn. Have your brake torque on both H1 and H2, quarter to a half turn. Good rebate. Andrew, guys, for the 12 o'clock. Black on black, good pull, good twist test. We're in Papa Papa. Still in box six. Okay, Tom, take that Fox to an Alpha on roll, and we are in a good config. Copy. And the broke torque on each one a quarter turn, just moving over to each two. Copy. through the rolls at Alpha. All right, copy that, Tom. Great job. Uh, so we're not going to have you do anything additional from here, so this is going to be uh, camera and video time. Are you in the procedure, Kayla? Um, I just broke torque on H2. Um, I'm just finishing up the second BDCU, and then I have to stop restraint tieback. This is out. Good head over that way towards you. Is that up to you? And uh, for Drew, uh, H2 broken a quarter turn. Going from our PGT. Yep, next we're going to do H1 Alpha 7 counterclockwise 2. Roger, moving back over to H1. The 
Drew, I was thinking about heading over towards Kayla. That's all right with you. Hey, Tom, uh, we, it's up to you and Kayla if you're going to head all the way out there, but she's going to be done here pretty quickly. In the end, we want Kayla to translate back in ahead of you. Appreciate it. All righty. Okay, I'll get some snaps here. Roger. Okay. And for Drew, I've got Alpha 7. Uh, clockwise 2, and I'm at H1. Kayla, the settings are going to be Alpha 7 counter clockwise 2. Roger, Alpha 7 counter clockwise 2, and understand I'm fully releasing about a seven, 7 turns. Good, read back about 7 turns to release. I will go ahead and get my crew like bag on me. And Drew, Sounds good. Uh, that was eight turns on H1. Um, the PGT did not skip this time, but I believe it's fully released. But I'm not sure what indications I have of that, though. I did notice the um, lock unlock indicator is um, indicating. It was kind of like um, bouncing, I guess, clicking back and forth near the walk indicator. Checking. Okay, let's give it two more turns on H1. I'm giving the uh, paddle a couple of pushes on the feed cart. All right, we see it. Drew, that was two more turns on the PD, PGT and Bolt seem to skip this time. Okay, copy Kayla. We're gonna we're ready for you to reset your PGT Alpha Seven, and this one will be clockwise too for bolt H2. Okay, Alpha 7, clockwise 2 set, and I'll just adjust my body position, and then let you know when I'm going to start turns. Copy. I've got Alpha 7 clockwise 2 set, and I'll be driving to torque about a quarter turn. Copy that. That sounds like a good set. You might, 9.2 foot pounds, um, and that was about a quarter turn. Okay, copy, Caleb. We're heading over to the Saab bracket. Okay, we'll meet you there. That's in the opposite corner.
through. I've got my crew like that. Copy, Tom. Taylor, while you're making your way over there, we know that you still have that ORU bag on you. If you want to attempt stow that out of your way, because we think you might need the BRT in order to do these wire ties. Okay. We'll test that in a second here, Drew. Copy. And Kayla, a couple more words for you. Those micro fixtures there on that lithium ion battery by the sob, restrain, the sob that we're going to restrain, you, those are unfortunately are not able to translate on those. And then one final reminder, Kayla, there's the radiator just there at your feet. Copy, and I have a recommended handrail for you for you to BRT when you're actually working the wire ties. I'm ready for it. It's 5124. Okay, I see that just to my right.
Here, I'm going to go for my first long wire tie. Okay, copy. I know you've studied the pictures of this. I can give you any words, but you know that big one is going to go through the tunnel there and then put three twists on it. Switching now to live views from NASA astronaut Kayla Barron as she works on a couple of get-ahead tasks before the conclusion of this spacewalk. She's breaking torque or loosening a couple of the bolts on a couple of different locations on the space station. Again, not related to the SASA, but could one day be helpful in case we ever need spares. Here I've got the wire tie through the upper strength tunnel, both of them, and I've got three half twists. Okay, Kayla, that looks good. And you know the second wire tie goes on that micro fixture there adjacent. Okay, that's going to work. And that's on the um, lithium ion battery to the inboard side, correct? Affirmative.
After completing her task to break torque, Kayla Barron is now working on her second get ahead task. This involves putting wire ties on the sub or solar array blanket boxes, and that's what you see her tying now. I've got it secured to H2 with two half twists. Copy, Kayla. And so now we're going to take that wire tie that you just placed, and we want it to go across that cable connection there, so it's kind of capturing it, depressing it down, and then use that wire to then grab the lasso that you just did on the on the sod itself. Exactly. Stand and turn the work. How far do you expect these to rotate back through? Very. Checking. Maybe like, I don't know, 30 degrees away from straight up. It's done. Yeah, Kayla, we want to clear, so I think they're meeting the. We want it to rotate all the way against that hard stop like you have it, exactly uh, closest to the micro square. So you, you are doing it exactly correct. And let me get this cable underneath. So. Yeah, Kayla, and so that ORU just off to your right is the uh, PFCS, and we want to be able to get at that robotically, and so your tieback is going to give us clear access to it. I'm going to reposition where I have the uh, attachment point here, if I can, um, just because I realize that's not super tight. And uh, Drew, I've got an idea for you guys. Um, would it be okay to thread the H2 wire tie under the looped wire tie and then tighten it back that way? Yep, Kayla, that's exactly what we want you to do. Then double it back and then add three twists. Roger. Yeah. Picture, I kind of remembered the um, end being connected, but this I think seems better from my standpoint right now. As one of her get-ahead tasks, NASA astronaut Kayla Barron is working to install a set of two long wire ties to the solar array blanket boxes. I do have got it restrained back. And I will try to, tell me if you can see it in my WVS, I'll show you how much play remains. It's definitely clear of the corridor. Kayla, it looks great. Um, we are very satisfied with that. We're going to call that task complete. Okay. I 
will work on um, getting my medium ORE bag back on my BRT, and then head on board to join Tom. Copy. All right, that sounds good, Kayla, and uh, we'll meet you at your green hook. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron just confirming that she has finished the final of her four get-ahead tasks. After the installation of those wire ties that the ground confirmed looked great and was exactly what they were looking for, she'll now make her way back to Tom Marshburn while they'll begin the procedures to get back into the space station and out of their spacesuits. How are you doing? Doing good. Taking some pics. Hey. I've got some of you in there. Awesome. I see a little cleanup steps here, and then I'll start my translation back to you. Copy. Erin is now tracing her steps uh, that she took originally to the work site for her get-ahead tasks, now going in reverse back to Tom Marshburn. They'll soon begin the ingress procedures, which are expected to take about 25 minutes. Tom and Kayla, for both of you, if we could get one final glove and hap check from you as Kayla starts to make her way back. Can work. Okay. Andrew, I've got some uh, smudging on the middle finger, on my right hand. Or did he look good? Okay, that's a good check on you, Tom. And, and smudging on the little finger of my left hand, and it happens dry. Our TV looks good on both hands. Copy. And Drew, I have some black smudges on my fingertips. The ones actually I didn't have before. Um, but other than that, Gloves look the same as last report. Actually, I see a little bit of wear on the outside RTV wear on the outside of my left index finger. Okay, Kayla, that's a good glove check, and we're ready for you to start translating back towards your green hook. As you make your way back, 
near the SASA antenna. We do have one warning for you. If we're going to ask that you stay at least about four feet away from the P1 SASA high gain antenna, but if you stay on the translation path and you stay off the SASA stanchion, you'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to put my visor up real quick before I start heading back. And Kayla, I think you said it, but just well, maybe if, not you could quite yet, actually. if you confirm your half is dry. It's dry. Copy. I'm going to wait like 30 seconds for the sun to go down. I'm going to put my visor up and then I will head. Um, back to Tom. We copy. Doing okay, Tom? Oh, yeah. Doing great. I'm back at the uh, position where you come down, Nader. Okay. Meet you over here. Just came in board of the Sarge. Happy. And they need handholds there, aren't they? Tom and Kayla, we're about two minutes from a handover. I just wanted to let you know we're just shy of a six-hour EVA, and we're going to meet you back at the airlock here shortly, and Kayla will just listen for words for your green hook. The International Space Station just entered into an orbital nighttime. And then we have some views of NASA astronaut Kayla Barron from her helmet camera as she makes her way back to the Quest airlock. On her journey, she will be passing by the SASA unit and will now keep a distance from it because it is powered on and moving. Safe. I'm just taking my time here to make sure my safety tether is tended. Lots good. of uh, places for it to hang up. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank you, Tom. And just try to get eyes on the uh, UHF antenna here in a minute. Got my medium LRU U bag off to my left, so I just want to make sure. Um, I've got good clearance to the base of the UHF antenna.
We're in a brief but expected handover period as Kayla Barron makes her way back to the Quest airlock. One last get ahead test that they have to do, it can be done by either Barron or Marshburn, is to take a picture of a pit pin that astronauts Toma Pesquet and Aki Hoshide had installed into the airlock pass in this past September during their spacewalk. The original was showing some wear and tear, and the two international astronauts replaced it. My green hook is on my red reel. We copy. I'm continuing my translation. We're flight following. Nothing, Ms. Sasa. It's beautiful, is it? I see you coming. I'm going to take this part a little slow. The tricky part of the translation. NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn just confirmed that he has a visual on Kayla Barron. She is making her way so that the spa two spacewalking astronauts can ingress the International Space Station together. Um, Tom, could you please move further outboard? Absolutely. You're right below where I need to come down. Ah. You see? It didn't work. I was following your seat together. Mm -hmm. I was just uh, tracking your seat together as to where you come down. Okay. But doing that now. How's that? Much better, thank you. Absolutely. My safety tether is up against the uh, seat of handrail. Roger, I'm coming down. I see your safety tether, Tom. Okay, good. You heading in, I'll follow.
The two astronauts are now headed towards the airlock. As was her first task of the day, Kayla Barron had removed the thermal hatch cover, and now she'll be the one to open it back up again. They'll get to work stowing their bags and equipment that they brought out with them before entering. It's sort of just starting to get between your feet. Okay. I think as you uh, continue on, we'll just talk again when you get to the turnaround point. Is it clear, Tom? There it is. Clear. Didn't think it was going to, but... Thanks for the heads up on that. Sure. Just get your feet uh, facing forward a little bit when you turn the corner. Okay. Although it's tightening up now, looking better. I see it. Just for your awareness, Tom, it's caught up on the corner of this MLI. It'll be easy for you to clear on your way by. Copy. I want to move it because it was keeping it tight. Okay, thanks. So there's it. I want to see this first. And Kayla, you have to go to open the thermal cover when you arrive at the airlock. I'm on the seat of spur as well. Like I'm clear of that MLI. Circular handrail. Down a local. Removing my third lead. And the thermal cover is open. Copy, Kayla. Thermal cover is open, and you can stow the bags uh, as you would like. We know that you also have that ratchet wrench still on your mini workstation. If you wanted to take that off and stow it separately, up to you. Baron just gave verbal confirmation that the hatch thermal cover is open, one of the early steps into getting back into the Quest airlock. She's now going to work on stowing some of the bags that contain the tools that they needed to replace the degraded Sasa. Now approaching six hours into the spacewalk with NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, Barron's first and Marshburn's fifth spacewalk of his career. The Quest airlock is now in view on your screen. My one, Tom, if you mind. Oh, yeah, no, Before you started to drift it a little bit. Get a little more right here. There you go. And when you're ready, Kayla, you can attach your right waist tether to the airlock D ring extender and lock it.
My waist tether is attached to the airlock gearing extender. It's closed tidal lock. And Tom, I'm going to get this medium RU bag on an airlock rent real quick, and then I'll be ready to get out of your way and take the other crew lock bag. Copy. And then, Tom, we have one last task for you after you get that crew lock bag over to Kayla. If you could use your D5 camera and take some pictures of the aft pit pin on the forward hinge of the hatch. I think you've seen the diagrams, so just go ahead and okay, take pictures of all those. Right, right. Looks like astronaut Tom Marshburn was assigned to the last get-ahead task of the day to photograph a pit pin on the hinge of the hatch installed during the first international, all-international spacewalk out of the Quest airlock. I'm going to tend it on my way. And I'll finish ingressing. While Marshburn grabs that photo, Baron is disappearing from view as she enters into the Quest airlock, her feet now visible as she's almost completely inside. Hey, I'm looking. Here we go. Medium, how are you, Doug? Gold medium. All right, Tom. Okay. Fully ingressed. Happy. Got a crew like that here for you. Got a hand on it. Happy. Got the airlock right on it, and I'm going to release yours. Are you ready for it? Let's see. I am ready. Okay. It's coming to you. Okay. Right, thanks. Let me know when you're safe inside and safe. Uh, There's a lock on the... Oh, that's already complete. You're, like, uh, you're all complete, so you are good to go. Yep, and you have a go to ingress. Ready. Marshburn is now making his way inside the Quest airlock. Meanwhile, astronaut Raja Chari has left Matthias Mauer and is headed back to the equipment lock where he'll assist Baron and Marshburn out of their suits with the help of the other suit IV, Mark Vandehei. Okay, Tom, and you're go to take Kayla's anchor hook and put it onto your right waist tether and then confirm that it's locked. Vandehei and Chari now snapping a couple of photos as Marshburn makes his way back towards the crew lock. Once he gets in and the door is closed, repressurization can begin, bringing the PSI down from vacuum back to a, a PSI of about 14.7, at which point the hatch can be opened and Rajachari and Mark Vandehei will move the astronauts back into the equipment lock to help get their suits off. All right.
lightweight. Southern is closed and locked on EV2s. Southern, which is closed and locked. Copy, Tom, and you can and retrieve your anchor hook. Retrieved. And that's it. I'm heading in, and I'll get those fixed. And Tom, if you could just turn your heck off for us, and you're go to ingress. Okay, copy that. It works. Okay, punch the button. How's that? And Tom, we just wanted to check with you and make sure that you grabbed a couple of photos. Yeah. Okay, then just sitting up here. Copy, thank you. Get up into position here, Kayla, and get that. You're getting a live view now at the feet of astronaut Tom Marshburn as he makes his way back into the airlock. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron, his spacewalking colleague for the day, is already inside, is working to stow some of the bags that she brought in full of the tools. All primary tasks were complete today to replace a faulty communications antenna and replace it with a functioning one. And in addition, all of their get ahead tasks are complete. Much appreciated. Coming in? And Tom, that's all we needed. Everybody you can head on in. in. Okay, work. Yeah, I'm up against something there. That might be you, Kayla. Oh. Still some there we go. Watch your SC stop for a second, Tom. Your SCU was caught on your foot. You? Yeah. And no, you're good. Go. Go. I have the bags right here, so if they're in your way, please let me know. Okay. Let's slap that thermal cover, bring it back. Get the bounces back to me. Baron and Marshburn now working together to configure both their bodies and their equipment into the airlock so that repressurization can begin. Yeah, that's some work. 
thermal cover is slowly coming back. The person you see on screen now is NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei, and sometimes we'll see astronaut Raj Achari floating into view as well. They're the suit IVs for today's operation, helping Barron and Marshburn get in and out of their spacesuits. And if you can verify for us that the magnet actually engaged. You got to release it all the way. Get your hand in there. To... Release the hook. My SCU is connected and locked. Copy, Caleb. Did I have a weird angle? You're seeing the suited up gloves of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn as designated by the number 22 in the corner. We're getting his perspective as he tries to get the door closed. Down. Two, three. The view you're looking at is the thermal cover of the Quest airlock. Once Tom Marshburn gets that closed, then they could work to close the hatch. That thermal cover, just an extra layer of protection for the hatch door from the elements of space. The EVA does not conclude once the door is closed, but when the spacesuits are back off of internal battery power. Just not a strong enough magnet, doesn't seem like. Copy. Copy, Tom. And uh, we'll just ask that you make sure, give your best effort in getting the magnet engaged and then cinch it up to six black lines on that tail. I've got six. There's still a bit of a gap. About at the limit of the adjustable. And, uh, yeah, that magnet's uh, it's not engaging. Tell it's sticks on it for just a second and then pops right off. Checking. Looks pretty close to me, however. Yeah, I'm looking at about five inch gap, a four inch gap. Is 
Is the uh, medium mower you like behind me, Kelly? Um, it is. Oh, I see it. Near you. Oh, that was your feet. Okay. That was just still down in there. Tom, we were wondering if you could try to manipulate a little bit uh, because we think that it's flexing away so the magnet doesn't quite engage. And do what with it again? The, um, because it's sort of flexing. Hold on this all the way tight. It won't go in. Okay, so maybe up in about the middle of it, I mean, you mean? So the jet flow is as tight as it'll go, and I'm pulling the, uh, pulling it all the way up, the yeah, thermal cover up. Tom, if you hold with your left hand as you are and then push on the middle with your right hand. Did that. I'll push it on the ribs with my right hand. Went up at the left. And I'll let him go. It's just simply got enough magnetic force. I do see a bend in the rib again. Checking. I've got all the ribs out. At least I bend them out. Okay, it's it's stay intact intact now. Just had to barely release it, so it's all the way up now. All right, Tom, we like it. It's a very light touch to pop it off. Yep, uh, we're going to go with it. It looks good. And we're going to go ahead and have you remove your SCU from its pouch, open your DCM cover, and then connect and verify that we are connected and locked. Marsh Byrne confirms that the hatch thermal cover is closed. He worked with the ground to make sure that it laid flush and stayed closed. See the pouch. I think my wrist is a little bit against yours. I look, turn it around the other way. Got it. Yours going, Kayla? I'm connected. I'm connected as well. 
Which are both SEUs are connected. Okay, copy. You're both connected to your SEUs and they're locked in place. I have a note for you here. Uh, we'd recommend a TCV setting between 8 and max cold. This is dialed toward your, dialed toward your feet um, when we go to our next couple of steps. Okay. Roger, I am in 8. Got Kayla. Working it. Okay, guys, it's time to go. Water switch is off. You can expect an H2 off message. No, I'm at 8 and going for my water switch. My water switch is off. I have the H2 is off message. Mine is off, and I got the water is off message. Okay, that starts our two minute timer. Barron and Marshburn now moving through the final steps of their ingress procedures, including turning their water off. They're soon going to verify that the hatch is clear and ready to be closed. And the hatchway is clear. Okay, and then you can verify also that the handle position is per decal. As per the decal. All right, copy that, Tom. We'll let you know when the timers run. Turning off the water in their extravehicular mobility units, also known as their spacesuits, is a process that's expected to take about two minutes. Hey, Drew. Uh, so we still have a little bit of time. I just wanted to say something. Yeah, Tom, we got time. Hey, Kathy, just want to make sure uh, we had good comp still. And uh, pretty unbelievable that the team, everyone is able to pull this together in just a few weeks and get Kayla and I trained up and Raja and Matthias. The, um, the capability to do something that quickly is just fantastic. Uh, Vincent LaCourt and the team uh, in a, just an outstanding manner. Art Thomason and Greer Wilt gave us all the tools we needed and provided just uh, perfect instruction for us, gave us all the information in an understandable manner, and uh, we were just executing their suggestions of what they told us. Thanks to Michael Dino and Stephen Bellano for getting us in the suits out safely. Um, Drew, of course, fantastic job as always, uh, IV, and uh, Christian Huerta Lopez for putting together those very precise, perfect uh, robotic maneuvers. I know that was uh, a lot of all-nighters or all-weekers even set together. And uh, finally, Linda and the training team uh, for putting all that together. Of course, uh, on rapid notice, uh, giving us whatever we needed to succeed today. So uh, congratulations to everyone. Really appreciate it. Hey guys, we really appreciate the kind words, and on behalf of the entire EDA 78 EDA team, it was a real pleasure to develop this and execute it with you guys. You did a fantastic job. Thank you for restoring S-Band to the ISS. This was uh, just a great morning. Tom, Kayla, a couple of pros out there, and Mark, Raja, Matias, thank you very much for getting us through this. Great job. We're about a minute and a half from handover, and you are go for cl hatch closure. Go for hatch closure. One final shot.
over your way a little bit, Kayla. That's fine. The hatch is closed and locked. Copy, Tom. We understand that the EV hatch is closed and locked. Kayla, for you on the UIA, check that oxygen for EMU 1 and 2 valves are open. Ten EMU 1 and We're on a brief hand over period, but the crew in orbit is in the crew lock section of Quest. They're undergoing some checks right now before repressurization can begin. Yeah, you too. Yeah, the bulk of the work. You have to play with everything that's out there just about. All the tools. Yeah. And Kayla, I think we clipped there in a handover. We just wanted to verify that the oxygen for EMU 1 and 2 valves are both open. Oxygen EMU 1 and 2 are both open. All right, copy. And then also on the UIA, switch power for EV 1 and 2. Verify, switch power to on and verify that all four LEDs are on. Um, let's see, so power EV1 and 2 are on, and the EMU LEDs are on, the Orlon LEDs are off. We've got two LEDs. Yeah, Kayla, that's a good check, my mistake. And then we'll also take a check of the voltage for EV1 and EV2. 1.8.6 for both. All right, that's a good check for both of you. And now on your DCMs, you can switch power to SCU. Switch it. Switch it. And you can expect a warning tone. Power is in SCU for EV2. As well, Tom? Yes, I called it. Roger. Call it SCU for EV1. All right, copy both. Guys, from there, we are going to hand you over to Mark and Raja for, to continue the crew lock repress. Drew and Johnny and the rest of the team, thanks for taking such great care of these folks and uh, accomplishing the mission so well. Kayla and Tom, I asked you to crush it, but man, you all triple crushed it. So let's get you inside. Step on your DCM O2 actuator to press. O2 actuator going to press. My O2 actuator is in press. EV2's O2 actuator is press. Yeah. It's pretty sticky. Six minutes, six hours and 30 minutes into the EVA, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei on the right of the screen is walking the two spacewalking astronauts through the repressurization procedures. And what is in press? Happy one's in press. Tom, check the EV hatch MPEV is closed. The yeah. hatch. EV hatch is closed. Okay, I'm going to start repressing the crew lock. So I'm going to go to halfway between off and normal for a couple of minutes. Let me know if you want me to speed it up or slow it down or just throw it all, stop it. Here we go. Okay, ready. Ready. Good rate so far for me. As well. Copy.
When the crew lock gets to 4 PSI, you can expect an alert tone. Copy. I've got my feet in your face. Yeah, I'll do. Okay. Got plenty of What would you both think about me speeding this up a little bit? The EVA concluded at 11.47 a.m. Central, 12.47 Eastern Time, marking the end of the end of a U.S. EVA is marked when repressurization has begun and the pressure in the crew lock is climbing. It's at about 1.1 PSI. The total time of the spacewalk today was 6 hours and 32 minutes. Good, Kayla. How about you? I'm good. Can we bump it up a little bit more? A little more. Yep, I'm ready for a little bit more. And it is getting hard for us to hear you in here, so you're going to have to give me some hand signals. I did copy a little bit more. That's steady right now. Feeling Tom? Feeling good. Great. Yeah, I'd say yep. potentially go a little bit higher, but maybe just leave it here. Yeah. I think I could if you wanted to just pump it up a tad bit more. I'm happy with this as well. I'm clicking my ears. Uh, up a little bit. Let's give me a thumbs up. Speed up a little bit more. Here we go. Mark, if you could slow down a little bit. Copy. Slow down a little bit. Okay, we're getting close to 4 PSI. Again, you can expect an alert tone. Copy. Okay, our next step when we get to 5 PSI, I'm going to move the IV hash equalization valve to off. We're waiting for that. You can expect another alert tone for that. Roger. Didn't get me Z93 on me. Happy no Z93. My knowledge, I did not either. Happy Kayla as well. Okay, we just hit 5 PSI. We're starting our timer. What's going on now is we're waiting two minutes for the crew lock. 
pressure to stabilize, and then we'll see what uh, difference we get over the next minute after that. Roger. What do you think? This is awesome. Is that something? Yeah. And you just heard NASA astronaut remarking on her very first spacewalk that it was awesome. This was the 245th EVA for station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It was the 13th spacewalk for the year for the ISS. This was Marshburn's fifth spacewalk, giving him a total of 31 hours, one minute spacewalking time outside of the space station. This is Barron's first ever spacewalk, so the total of today's spacewalk, six hours and 32 minutes, is her record. Since this is the 245th spacewalk, that totals 1,548 hours and 26 minutes, or the equivalent of 64 days, 12 hours and 26 minutes. This is the very first EVA of Expedition 66. That was the uh, mass bolt. It looked like a bit of a beast. Uh, the expansion mass bolt? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was just um, the bolt goes so deep into that fitting. Um, it's really hard to get good visibility on if you're like really seated and if it's really driving. Um, we got there. Yeah. Baron now recapping with Tom how her first spacewalk went. Not like near the place right. the threads would engage, but didn't quite engage. And so it was hard to tell until I really saw it move. When I had it fully engaged, um, you could actually see that big bolt right. move down. Um, it was hard to know that's what it was going to look like until it happened. That was huge. I think the hardest part of the day for me was getting the, uh, well, those gimbal bolts were a stuff. The day before was the hardest thing I had to do today. If you ever use that, that collar is just, I think for sure you're at a hard stop and then it grinds past that and pops into the full. Locking collar? Yeah, the locking collar. Yeah. The spacewalk began at 5.15 a.m. Central Time, 6.15 a.m. Eastern, nearly an hour ahead of schedule. It concluded at 11.47 a.m. Central, giving us a total of six hours and 32 minutes. We get good DRT body positioning over those bolts because they're so far inboard from the handrails. Right. right. And um, having the, you have to get pretty high, too, because it's up on the frame. Carol and Tom, we had a good leak check, so we're going to continue on with the crew lock repress. Copy. Can you switch your glove heaters to off, OFF? My glove heaters are off. Glove heaters going to off. All right, Tom, let me know when your glove heaters are off, and then we'll press. They're off. Okay, got them. They're, they're off. Now check your gloves for contamination. Let us know if we've got any. Negative for one. Negative. I have the uh, dark smudges I reported earlier, but given that they're uh, black in color, I think we can confidently say that's not D93 paint. I would say no contamination. Thanks for copy. In Houston, do you copy? Houston copies, no issues. All right, Houston's good with that, and we're going to continue on. So on both of your DCMs, take your O2 actuators to IV. Didn't work? Didn't work. EV2, O2 actuators, and IV. And EV1, O2 actuator is getting there. Is in IV. Copy. Both of you have your O2 actuators in IV. I'm going to take the IV. Hatch equalization valve to
I think one of the reasons why it was hard to get the uh, graded facet down is I tried to push it down to get it flush. The arm would it bounce back a little bit. Yeah. So I needed to get something. I hit one hand on structure. Stabilize a little better. Yeah, or both hands on around the mass bolts. Yeah, we worked through it though. Yeah. I kind of expected that to be tricky because that alignment pin, you know, can rotate about that alignment pin. Um, so until you get one bolt started, it's like kind of hard to tell. Yeah. PSI in the crew lock is steadily rising, now reaching about 9 PSI. Your uh, directions for the remove and the install, the top of the truss were perfect. Yeah, that works out surprisingly well, I think. Yeah. I was surprised it was like popping off that soft dock, but we got there. Yeah. That, uh, I kind of felt like what we ended up doing should be was going to be what we should do, but the way they marched through it is just uh, really nice. You guys worked through that really well. NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn began their day by removing the degraded S-band subassembly. It's facing neater. Oh, wow. So it kind of felt like, you know, belly towards the Earth was an interesting perspective to have. There's not a lot to hold on to, I right? know. Uh, yeah, with your, um, you know, you have your hand on those handrails along the edge and then your feet kind of dangling out over the edge of the Earth. It's slow, though. Yeah. All right, Tom and Kayla, we're getting this close to getting the DPDT of about zero. When that happens, you can expect an alert tone. Oh, dear. Copy, Mark. That uh, little radio frequency cable is, or I forget what they call it, on top of the septum of the SASA. That was just right there. Right in your way. I'm going to interrupt real quick. We are going to 1.240, the post EVA procedure. Roger. The pressure in the crew lock now 14.7 psi. Buddy. NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij working to open the hatch so that Baron and Marshburn can come through. You take care of uh, steps four and five for the Tom reconvict. You can copy.
spacesuit IV Rajachari working to get the first spacewalker back through the hatch. Airlock Houston on one. The EV crew is no longer hot mic'd. And it looks like Kayla Barron, having just completed her very first spacewalk, is the first one back. Chari and Vandahai now working to remove her safer units. The jetpack type backpack that would have been used in case of an emergency was not needed today. Baron safer unit is now removed. You can see Tom Marshburn still in the airlock, in the crew lock. He's got the suit with the red stripes. Astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn began their day by removing a degraded S-band subassembly, just one of many communications antennae aboard the space station. It had lost partial functionality a few months ago, but thanks to several redundancies built in, the crew saw very minimal impact to their operations. They brought a spare SASA already on board, connected to the express logistics carrier number three, and put it in the degraded SASA's place on the P-1 truss of the International Space Station. They got the spare installed, hooked up, turned on, and they did a communications check to verify that it worked. The team here in Mission Control confirmed that they saw the communications antenna online and that they heard the voice check. The spacewalkers restored S-band capability to the International Space Station this morning. They wrapped up the day by stowing the degraded antenna, hooking it up to a heat source and tucking it in for the night with a thermal blanket covering. Kayla Barron was able to complete some get-ahead tasks, including braking torque on some of the bolts on the battery charge and discharge units, and connecting some wire ties. Both are now in the equipment lock. They completed all of their tasks for today, including the get-ahead tasks including the get-ahead tasks. And in the words of astronaut Mark Vandehei in the farther part of your screen, they triple crushed it. Marshburn wrapped up his fifth EVA with his career with some kind words, noting that it was unbelievable that everyone was able to pull this together in just a few weeks, and gave a nod to his support team, including EVA officer Art Thomason, or Flight Director Vincent Lacourt, and all the folks here on the ground, including those monitoring the spacesuits and robotics.
we can Here, Lux Houston on one, friendly reminder to perform step 17.1 for the helmet velcro straps. Shari and Vanda High on your screen, helping the spacewalkers out of their spacesuit now that it has concluded. Following this, they'll take their gloves and helmet off, get the rest of their spacesuits off, and head to a well deserved rest.
Kayla Barron's helmet is now off as she works to get her gloves off. Next up, we're about to see Raj Achari as he helps Tom Marshburn take his helmet off. And there we have NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn with his helmet off. This concludes the spacewalk for these two NASA astronauts now that they've accomplished their goal of restoring S-band capability to the International Space Station in six hours and 32 hours of spacewalking time, replacing a degraded SASA unit with a spare on board. The spacewalk concluded at 11.47 a.m. Central Time. Marshburn officially had his fifth spacewalk in the books, giving him a total of 31 hours, one minute, suited up and supporting space station maintenance and assembly on a spacewalk. Kayla Barron concluded her very first spacewalk of her career, ending it with a riveting review, saying it was awesome. Next up, NASA will introduce its 2021 class of astronauts at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, December 6th, from Ellington Fields, from right here at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. After completing their training, these individuals could be eligible for a variety of flight assignments, including missions on and around the moon through NASA's Artemis program. One of our spacewalkers today, Kayla Barron, on the left of your screen, along with Raj Achari there in the middle, who helped operate the robotic arm, were selected back in 2017, which is the last time NASA brought new additions to the astronaut corps. Now in 2021, we're ready to do it again, so tune in to find out who these individuals might be. Thanks everyone for following along, and we'll see you then. We see deep into the heart and veins of our ever-changing planet. Pictures of Earth are worth more than a thousand words. They are the blueprint for our future. To unlock the full potential of space's unique vantage point, we've created...